Hello everybody, hope you're having a beautiful morning, evening, night, whenever you're watching this video. I am going to dive back into my Rotten Mango catch-up game. And I'm just going to get started with the most recent one on like the whole Diddy's like freak-off case. Because honestly, it's hard to avoid on social media. Um, I don't know much like the details and whatnot. I'd say the only thing I've really seen fully is like that security camera footage. Other than that, there's just a whole bunch of little pieces of information that are being thrown around on the internet. And then there's people being like, oh, that's so fake. Why'd you make this up? It's like, no, it's real. So it's like, okay, hopefully watching this, I believe it's a three part, a three part piece on this whole case. So hopefully I learn a bit more on what the hell is going on. So let's just start with this one. She just released the Weird things happen other one in Times Square, a few minutes ago. Especially on Saturday nights. But even by those standards, this is about to get very strange. A man walks into this popular building and he beelines it to the ninth floor. So it appears that he knows exactly where he's headed, exactly what he has to do. Security cameras show this man in a hoodie at 8.45 p.m. walking straight up to this to this other man in a tuxedo. I mean, I'm sure if you were to somehow get your hands on this footage, you could see that the figure in the tuxedo looks very familiar. It looks like Sean Diddy Combs. I'm Diddy, sure people the could musician, find it. The mogul, the hooded man walks straight up to whom everybody refers to as Diddy. And he just out of nowhere, unprompted, knocks him onto the ground. And for lack of a better word, because of the force, I guess, of how he knocked him over, Diddy's head pops off, becomes decapitated what the man then starts stomping on diddy's decapitated head just stomping until his head is turned literally into a pulp what the he fuck? spits on the head before he books it out of there he runs straight out of madame tucson's wax museum Anita. in times square after decapitating diddy's wax figure okay i was gonna it's say an unprompted unprovoked seemingly random yet so premeditated attack i don't think it was i mean it can't be random right random. For someone to do yeah this, exactly they must have something against diddy they weren't going on a rampage just knocking over every wax statue. hollywood is it's a specifically diddy vile dark place yes. diddy declined to comment on the incident but now people are wondering does it have anything to do with everything that's happening right now because five years after this incident, $60 million dollars of Diddy's disappears. How does $60 million just vanish? I mean, if there's $60 million in cash, maybe it's a little bit more feasible. But the way that this $60 million is set up, it weighs 48,000 pounds. Sheesh. That's like the weight of 24 cars that just goes dark. It just goes missing. Or like 42 grizzly bears. How does it just disappear? That is exactly what happens in March 2024 to Diddy's $60 million Gulfstream G550 private jet. Oh. It's registered under La Vera LLC. People it's can steal a Vera, jet. But it's a 20-seat matte black aircraft, and it just goes missing. Now, to be very technical, the plane hasn't vanished. It's not a mystery in that sense, but it does go dark. Technically, all planes can be tracked, even private planes, thanks to the ADSB system. It's the Automatic Dependent Surveillance mm -hmm. Broadcast System. It broadcasts every single plane's position, altitude, speed, and other information every right. three seconds. You get three second updates. It's mandated for all aircraft to improve safety and efficiency. Now, mm -hmm. some websites have made a business of relaying all that data to the public. I used to want to get my pilot's it license. For the public to I don't know why you didn't. Planes. It's very intriguing. You know, there's whole Twitter accounts dedicated to tracking famous people's planes, mostly to pressure them to stop flying back and forth in their private jets while we're all stuck sucking on paper straws. Just but mind your business. People will track plane data because it tells you more than just what celebrities are doing. It can tell you what high profile business leaders are headed. And then you can kind of guesstimate where they're trying to invest, what next moves the company is going to make by tracking their movements. But on March 26th, 2024, a very famous man's plane goes dark. Sean Diddy Combs private jet, a Gulfstream G550, goes dark. On FlightAware's website, if you look up Love Air, you get this message. This aircraft is not available for public tracking per request from the owner and operator. So you can remove yourself. 
Yes, it's not unusual for people, especially celebrities, to request flight tracking data to be blocked from the site. But a lot of times, if people really want to find you, they can find you. Right. Because it's not like you stop broadcasting your plane's location. Mm -hmm. You just request that these specific websites do not relay that information to the public. Okay. Now, people think the timing of it is very interesting because the plane lands in the Caribbean island of Antigua. It's never a and coincidence. And it goes dark online. Just a day after his homes in Miami okay, and Los pictures. Angeles are raided by Homeland Security in an ongoing trafficking investigation. This is the case of a music mogul who is accused of trafficking. He is facing at least 11 different lawsuits from victims. Another 120 are suspected to file lawsuits against him. He is currently sitting in prison awaiting trial. Back up, there are rumors that the feds have taken 100 electronic devices where the rumor is he and his fellow friends in the industry, high profile celebrities, have been caught engaging in potentially illegal activities. This is part one of the Sean Diddy Combs case. It's just not surprising at all. I don't know how people don't have it registered in their heads yet. I'm sure people know, but it's still a very, very surprising uh, case. But people have been exposing him years back. We would like to thank today's sponsors who have made it possible for Rotten Mango to support the Arizona Anti-Trafficking Network. They work constantly to bring solutions to the illegal human trafficking network in the states by creating awareness, researching, and training in the most current anti-trafficking methods. This episode's partnerships have also made it possible to support Rotten Mango's growing team, and we'd also like to thank you guys for your continued support. As always, full show notes are available at RottenMangoPodcast.com. A big disclaimer to keep in mind throughout this entire case is it's currently ongoing and developing as we speak. Mm -hmm. There has been no court verdicts yet. So unfortunately, I must legally state that these are all the current accusations and allegations. Hey, we're all the jury, okay? I'm sure there's just way too many pieces of evidence out already to just be like everyone is just playing a big prank on you haha ha, just kidding these allegations are all made up haha ha. like come on I, even if his in some weird way isn't true you know there's hundreds others of celebrities in hollywood that are performing these types of really hosting these types of really sick sex trafficking rings, drugs, I don't know, so many vile, dark things. People are innocent until proven guilty, legally speaking. Some statements have been shortened for time, and all the theories and speculations mentioned are netizen opinions that can be found publicly online. All reporting for this episode is also taken from information that is online, so please do your own research, form your own opinions. I'm not here to convince you of anyone's guilt or guilty. innocence. Guilty. Some potentially my triggering verdict. themes involve heavy use of illicit substances, including date r word drugs domestic violence workplace and gang violence essay and trafficking this case is also going to be heavy so please please do not hesitate to take a break and unplug with all that being said Good. let's get started originally i was hoping to do a two-parter on the diddy case but then it became a three-parter and then there was 13 deaths loosely connected somehow to diddy oh, so damn. now it has become a four-part series oh, okay four i've parts. never been down a rabbit hole like this one before there is no end in sight and i'm mm -mm. sure with the trial in may of next year there will be inevitably another part then i'm sure just the amount of information the amount of strange mysteries surrounding diddy's life I don't think I've ever really touched a case like this before. Really? I feel like I've heard of at least two, three other cases kind of similar to this before. And maybe not to this extent that a lot of people know about it, because a lot of people know about this. It's all over social media. It's been all over social media. But I feel like I've heard cases like this pretty similar. I know a lot of people liken him to Epstein, which I can see why that comparison is drawn. But the key difference here is Diddy is a very famous man. Epstein, he also circulated amongst famous and wealthy people, but he primarily was rubbing shoulders with the wealthy elite that are tend to be a lot more private. Mm. But Diddy and all of his friends, they're very famous. There's just so much weird information available online that in hindsight, it appears quite scary. 
This will be part one where we do a deep dive on the lawsuit that started all of this, the hotel footage of him beating his then girlfriend Cassie, as well as other girlfriends who have spoken out against him, as well as covering the freak offs and somehow we get into the Illuminati. Part two will be in depth on the other lawsuits against him, as well as a lawsuit against his son, what happens at Diddy's yacht parties, and the very strange death of the mother of his children, Kim Porter, who died of pneumonia. And a very controversial book that claims to be her diary entries before oh, her yeah, death. The book. And that book seems to implicate Diddy as having a bigger hand in her death. Part three will be about the 13 people who have mysteriously died around Diddy. Like, I don't know where I heard it. Supposedly, some people are making fake copies of that book, selling it on Amazon. It's like, come on, y'all. There's a really? very, very alarming pattern, not Weirdos. an implication of guilt, but a pattern of some strange, bizarre ways that he responds to people dying around him. And finally, part four will be the so-called Diddy's List, the internet allegations of all the celebrity friends who are rumored to somehow be involved in Diddy's ficking charge. Also, some other wild conspiracy theories that Diddy's not in prison, he's been cloned, there's tunnels under his house, the baby oil is laced, as well as the 120 people that are working on suing him. And with that being said, let's get into it a case like this they say the floors there's the there is National no end Doral, miami hotel especially with the amount of people involved claimed, evidenced by footage of a man dressed in black inside the hotel that gets released he's in this nearly empty area of the hotel and he's pointing his gun behind hell? him and his wrist seems to be made out of jello while he's just shooting up in the air at the ground he's sometimes shooting at the chandelier sometimes at the ground itself and the footage is he's interesting just, he's just recklessly shooting his gun right he's slipping on the freshly cleaned floors multiple times he's wearing just socks on tiled floors then he gets up and then shoots around like his wrist is made out of jello and then starts running trips again honestly if you told me this is movie footage of a man who is shooting at ghosts i would potentially believe you same but it's not it's real footage it's real footage of a man Drugged. screaming come out mother while shooting at the ceiling and in the lounge areas this man also grabs an American flag to drape over the front desk of the hotel. This is during Trump's presidency. Of course. He goes behind the counter, starts breaking, smashing the computers. When the Miami-Dade police arrive, a shootout ensues. Both sides are firing, and in the commotion, the gunman manages to flee. He is found later hiding near the elevators with gunshot wounds to his legs. One gunshot to the right ankle, two to the left leg. Interestingly enough, most of the shots fired by the man were into the floor and ceiling, and ultimately the only one shot, thankfully, was himself. The man, Jonathan Odie, is arrested. Hmm. Before the police can even question his dangerous but honestly kind of bizarre crime, they have to take him to receive medical attention. The whole time that doctors are trying to save him from his own pain, he's screaming, I'm not going to talk to none of y'all traitors. I need to talk with the FBI Secret Service. Someone get me the CIA. I need the media on the line now. Look at me. I'm an intelligence officer and there will be no president in two days. There's going to be nuclear weapons. The police will no longer exist. The more he talked, Which the more he lost me. I would me. say is one of the last things you would want to say after the crime he committed. But even more so, when the police figure out that he is, in fact, not a CIA operative, he's a sucker for a website called DancingBears.com. It's an X-rated website where male dancers put on big bear masks mm -hmm. and have intimate relations with women. Ew. But he continues rambling about, quote, Obama is Osama. Trump makes his money on gas. Kill all the police in the street. Useless, good for nothing. Nada. All of you. Laws are corrupt. Police death has come to you. You you be judged. Die for now and for hell and for all of eternity. People in the streets are going to shoot you. Get heart attacks. You're all dead. I'm going to let them know to put a bullet in your head. My dog, Bubbles. My dog, You got to let him out of the apartment, Bubbles. If he does not eat, he will die. He then proceeds to pass the officers his house and car keys. Don't hurt my dog, Bubbles. So you don't have uh, the United States? Yeah. Just my dog, Bubbles. He continues on his rambles. I have a settlement. I have a settlement with the former president of the United States, Obama. Uh, I have a settlement with the current president of the United States, Donald Trump. And I have one with P. Diddy. Excuse me? It's After random. the hospital, Jonathan Odie is brought into an interrogation room. Here's what I want you guys to know. Diddy and Ross, which they're good buddies, okay? And uh, they're, they're, they're gay. 
Ross. Rick Ross. The police are confused. Who, who is? Katie and Ross and Chad. They all gay. DJ Chad and Rick Ross and Katie. Yeah. They're all gay. Yeah. Gotcha. I'll act surprised, honestly. <laughs> I'll just act surprised just for <laughs> just for the laughs. Cause honestly, anything that comes out is from this guy. I, I don't know how to really take it. That I was telling you about. Who puts I will his be surprised in though. a triangle shape. The Illuminated group, you know, the Illuminati, which is an elite group, okay? Individuals which run the whole country, all right? What I did this for was to basically transmit a statement to the American people because they want the United States to fall. They've been creating chaos and confusion in the United States. They want the United States to fall. You have the Illuminati, basically, which means illuminate. They do um, satanic ritual abuse, which is basically CIA mind programming techniques to their own family and kids. And they bond that way. They do animal abuse, killing of animals, blood sacrifices uh and everything in the bohemian grove this is all he's saying you know, where the bushes go counting okay how do i know this yeah that's what i want to know how do you know this sean combs of daddy yeah D -D, whatever you call himself yeah. yeah go ahead yeah he's part of what's called the boule the boule the boule is a branch of the Illuminati. okay it's the black people okay uh, i'm from africa so i'm not a racist Okay. okay, you my brother. So and that he made that disclaimer. My, my mom I was raised by a, by an African woman. My house. Bro, just get to it. And the police are like, oh, what are you okay, talking okay, about? Right, right, okay. Um, so I have this settlement with Sean, and he belongs to that agenda. That's why he's so famous. They land over contracts. Uh, okay. He leans in. He puts his arms on the table. I had to with Cassie and Sean. Basically, he would... Uh, he would they tell me what to do with Cassie. I had like 15 encounters and I heard a lot. Because when they would do it, Sean talks a lot on the phone and on the TV with speakers and stuff. And I'll be in there. I was like a slave. Yeah, for them. That's what I was. He leans back. Um, so I caught herpes. He goes on. What is going on? God, yeah, I mean, it just rambles. seems like the ramblings of someone who is a little unhinged. He leans back and he goes on to explain that Diddy's two attorneys asked him to turn in a video recording. Those two attorneys are also involved in Michael Jackson's death and the Illuminati. It's unclear, but it seems like he's stating a video was recorded of this supposed encounter and he turns it in. But he also states they gave it back to me accidentally. And it's possible that I threw everything out. But it's also possible that I could produce a copy. I'm not sure. Bro. Now, how does that lead up to him going into the Trump Hotel with a gun? My settlement put me in a box. Basically, I couldn't talk because I was going to be sued. So I let it be, but they've been following me, and they've had smart characters had uh, the FBI on me. So your neck is hurting with all that looking over your shoulder. looking at me, a spy on me, okay, because they want to set me up as an extortionist. Like if I was extorting Sean for money, it's wrong. Basically, what happened is the Ciroc agenda, you know, the Ciroc vodka agenda is to promote binge drinking and drugs. The hip hop agenda, that's why they had Tupac killed. Because when they killed him, they gained pain. That's when the record sales go up. That's how you become famous. That's how that's how you do it, all right? You take the Tupac big dog out. Tupac is still out. alive. He's in Cuba. Basically, what happens... There's it, been conspiracies it, it the about that. Agenda. What? He alleges, in more simplified terms, they move drugs all over the United States. They move drugs in private jets that don't get screened within the United States domestically. They move all that dope in the private jets. They move what's called high-grade powder MDMA. They move cocaine. They move liquid cocaine in their bottles, too. I've seen liquid cocaine. I've tried it myself. I mean, sex with Diddy and Cassie. Okay, it's not good. He drinks it all the time. I was gonna say he knows an awful lot for just being a, some sex slave, but then he also said that um, that he's been talking on the phone a lot, speakers and whatnot. So if he's just free, just speaking all this stuff out in the open, then I'm sure he's just gonna register that in his memory. You know, some of these things he ke he keeps going off on rambles that I'm just like, okay kind of irrelevant but there's some little pieces of information in there that i would be taking a little bit more seriously 
or I call it gene kit. It sounds gene unhinged, gene. but. Uh, Many state it sounds like an interrogation really? that one would watch to study for psychology class. And to be frank, there's many parts of the interrogation that sounds like the unhinged ramblings of someone who has lost touch with reality and has gotten swept up in every internet conspiracy possible. Perhaps he created a whole fantasy of two high profile A-list celebrities and in his mind, he truly knows them. He's met them. He's had these encounters with them, but it's all a fantasy, right? It doesn't change the fact that he committed this crazy crime. I mean that, and it but that I just think it's a little random. Are full blown conspiracies? We hope, but the question is, what if there's even a little bit of truth to what exactly he's that? Because four years later, the Department of Homeland Security conduct a multi state raid on Diddy's L.A. mansion and his Miami mansion. Diddy's L.A. home is described as quote, an immersive experience. It's on the same street as the Playboy Mansion as well as Kylie Jenner's home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One reporter says, within moments of entering his home, a member of the staff will walk up offering you a drink, likely Deli on tequila infused Diddy's tequila brand. Well, former tequila brand. There's a personal chef on duty, but they don't just start shoving food down your throat. They don't even ask you, are you hungry? Instead, they wait. They watch you without making you feel watched. They just wait for you and your body to send signals that you're feeling for a little snack. One recent Vanity Fair piece on Diddy says, the hospitality is both overt and inconspicuous. You will enjoy yourself here or someone will die trying. What does that mean? It seems to insinuate that someone will die trying to make you enjoy yourself. By doing... All these things over the just top. There's so bending much over staff backwards. trying to make sure you're having a good time. Mm. It's overt, but it's also inconspicuous. The staff are wearing everyday clothes. They're not dressed up in weight staff attire. It's just, it's fascinating. They have this relaxed attitude, but they can tell that they're not relaxed. They're mm. high alert. But when you see them walking down the stairs, it looks like they have nowhere to be. But you can just tell shit gets done in this house. Huh. So like, you know how you were talking about Epstein's house? Yes. There was like so many staffs, right? Yes. And they're all so dressed up mm -hmm. and, and just standing around. So you're saying Diddy's people are always around, but they look like they're not like uptight. They look like they're family friends. But they are actually yes. very uptight. They're That's like lounging on the couch, but they're probably surveying you and trying to see what you need next. Wow. Because the minute that you're half done with a glass of water, you've got now a wine glass in your hand. It just gets so seamlessly replaced. Which takes even more effort. More effort, more skill. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Now, in hindsight, that's a very grim description of his home. Someone's going to die trying. You will enjoy yourself here. If the staff don't make people feel out of place or slightly uncomfortable or watched, the grandness of the house is going to accomplish that. The house is one of the pricier residential homes in Southern California. It's actually I on mean, the market right now, if you're interested, no. for $61 million. It looks more like a resort than a residential home. Yeah, It's a modern colonial style home. It's all white. It looks like the White House on steroids with beautiful French doors, beautiful iron balconies on the second floor. It's got this massive swimming pool, basketball court, a separate two-story guest house, state-of-the-art movie theater that seats 35 guests, a resort-like swimming pool with a waterfall, a spa house, gym, recording studio. There's this giant metal statue in the back. It looks like one of those metal statues. And if you were to slice it back and mm. forth, it's like rings. Mm. Tacky. Yep, yep, yep. And it's a it's the headless torso of Kim Porter. It's said often that he speaks to her giant metal bust. It was his tribute to his now gone Kim Porter, which we will talk about in episode two. It's a massive 10 bedroom, 13 bathroom estate, 17,000 square foot home. But in March 2024, tanks are driving up to that house. A swarm of fully decked out in tactical gear officials start clearing through that house. They've got guns pointed in every direction. They're sending in drones to check rooms. Diddy's two sons, 30-year-old Justin and 25-year-old Christian, are forced up against the wall, handcuffed with guns pointed at them. They're dragged out of the house while the rest of the team tear through that place, which is interesting because what exactly are these Homeland Security officials looking for? It's said by the time that they left, there were just cables dangling around like they unplugged some security cameras, multiple safes that were left wide open, almost 100 electronics confiscated. At the same time, 
His massive $40 million compound in Miami was also raided by Homeland Security at the same time, Whoa. coordinated. It's a pretty crazy visual to see Homeland Security just rolling up in tanks, camo, full gear, raiding a mansion in a neighborhood where you've got Imagine the hedge being the neighbors, billionaire just... Citadel founder Ken Griffin just down the block, where Philip Frost, a pharmaceutical billionaire, owns a large piece of land. There's only like 50 houses on this little Yeesh. island that he lives in, in Miami. It's called Star Island. It's like a billionaire island. I would never want to live Interestingly there. Interestingly enough, Alex Rodriguez and his then girlfriend, Jennifer like Lopez, the purge. who also happens to be Diddy's ex-girlfriend, owned a house on the same island. 40 million Miami home, 60 million LA home, both getting raided at the same time. By Homeland Security. And where is Diddy? Diddy, he's at an airport in Miami. He did. Oh, so he wasn't there. Someone no, set off the alarm. He of ran him. away. And he did. So that's what people thought because there. his plane went dark, but he didn't actually run away. It said that he was searched at the Miami airport. Mm -hmm. It's like a private small airport in Miami. There's actually someone who took a video of him pacing mm -hmm. around because I'm sure he's getting all the news that his homes are getting raided. He just got spoken Stressed. to by Homeland Security. And someone says he's ominously sweating. while they're recording Diddy, you're probably wondering what's going to happen next, Diddy. I guess you wonder what's going to happen next, Diddy. And then... It's very unsettling. The whole thing is unsettling. In a statement, Homeland Security states, because when your house gets raided by Homeland Security, that is very odd. Yeah. Homeland Security is the department that is responsible for trafficking investigations. Mm. Because you, you hear the FBI, you hear people getting swatted. Yeah. Homeland Security is a bit bizarre. Yeah, is, are they more mm. intense than FBI, I wonder? Uh, some people think they are, but definitely some of the crimes that they investigate are pretty intense. Like you're talking um, very organized crime charges. In a statement, Homeland Security states, earlier today, Homeland Security Investigations New York executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from Homeland Security Los Angeles, Miami, and our local law enforcement partners. We will provide further information as it becomes available. The further information would shock many netizens. The feds would reveal that they are investigating Diddy for trafficking charges, and that they found 1,000 bottles of baby oil and lubricant along with narcotics in Diddy's mansion. I mean, were you guys shocked when you heard this? I, <laughs> I not really. Well, mainly because I don't really listen to his songs all that much, if at all. So when I heard it, I was like, oh, another celebrity is being exposed for some dirty deeds that they're doing behind the scenes. Um... But just to the extent that it's going to, I'm like, damn, there's more, there's more information. Um, I'm just, no, I said people have been talking about it years, years back, but I'm just surprised it even took this long to actually start searching and dig up the dirt because the amount of people, celebrities mainly who were speaking of it is kind of surprising honestly um but just thinking about it if you're maybe more of a regular person you're just gonna get off so that the news doesn't get around 1,000 bottles of baby oil is about ten thousand dollars which is nothing for diddy but still what on earth is he doing with 1,000 bottles of baby oil that is enough to fill a 100 gallon fish tank you could use the baby oil to paint the surface the outside of the white house one time and then another half you know those giant water coolers such weird in those corporate offices and you connect it uh -huh. to the machine and yep. it like that's about 83 of those jugs of baby oil i also think it's bizarre that they disclosed that yes. out of everything i'm sure there's a lot of incriminating evidence they found but they are saying here's a thousand baby oils do what you will it's with really bizarre so, so some people think that it was included in the indictment to indicate this amount of baby oil must have links to the king you don't just do this as someone who loves to have intimate relations with even multiple women and men who cares right yeah but it's a bit this excessive gives some sort of organized brothel vibes or some people think that it was included in the indictment along with the narcotics because there is suspicion that the baby oil has been laced with something mm. but what what wouldn't they disclose that already we don't know because mm. they don't have to disclose any of that now, but more alarming is that they find nine AR-15 style weapons 
six with the serial numbers intact, but three of them, the serial numbers are scratched off, which is very scary. Now, many believe that this raid was kicked off by Cassie Ventura's lawsuit against her ex-boyfriend, Diddy. His homes are raided in March of 2024. Cassie Ventura, Diddy's ex-girlfriend, files her lawsuit November 2023. But everyone thinks, no, 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 the lawsuit actually starts back in 2022. I know it's very confusing. Bear with me here. 2022, Cassie and Diddy have already been broken up for four years now. In fact, Cassie is married to another man. She's a mom with two beautiful children, but Diddy is winning the BET Lifetime Achievement Award. His rumored girlfriend, Young Miami of City Girls, is in the crowd holding up a sign supporting him. But in his winning speech, instead of thanking Young Miami, he says, anything I do is through love. That's what I evolved to be. That's what I'm doing right now. I was in a dark place for a few years and I got to give a special thank you to the people that was really there for me. He lists a few people and then there's this odd moment where he looks directly into the camera and says, Cassie, for holding me down in dark times, love. Yeah, and also Cassie for holding me down in the dark times, love. Get that man off the stage. Wait, he broke up already? What year Four was years that? ago. They oh, broke yeah. up in 2018. This is in 2022. That is crazy. She's married. She's moved on. It's oh. not like they're still on and off. He's dating young Miami. He's dated like a string of other women, allegedly, after oh. this. Uh -huh. And he's publicly in this weird relationship with young Miami where it's like kind of unclear if they're dating or not. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit unclear, but she's there, right there. Yeah. Cassie's not even there. Yeah. This is very strange. Is and it he, like kind of like a threat almost? That's what it feels like. At the time, nobody thought it was. They just thought it was kind of disrespectful to young Miami but maybe he was still pining for Cassie because they did date for like 10 years. Maybe he wants her back and she's the one that got away. No. But now in hindsight, no. it feels like a threat because just 18 months later, Cassie will file a lawsuit against Diddy. The 19 year old Cassie gets presented with this very simple 10 album deal with Diddy's record label, Bad Boy Records. So far, Cassie just has a few songs that by chance happen to be playing at a Wait, club. When was this? This is back in 2006. Oh, this is when they first meet. Her, her songs were playing at a club that Diddy was at and he's intrigued. I mean, her voice, it's nice. She's going viral on MySpace at the time. MySpace. And 37 year old Diddy ends up signing 19 year old Cassie to his label. She releases an album under Bad Boy Records. It debuts number four on the Billboard 200 in the US, which is a big freaking deal, especially when you factor in this is her first debut album. It seems like Cassie herself is not even ready for this level of commercial success. She was just going around promoting her album, doing these different press interviews, press tours. She would perform her songs live, but because she's so nervous and she's never done this before, she would freak out. Her performance would be considered not her best and the media was just ripping into her. This is her first taste of fate, really. Side note, this is the same girl who said one of her first performances, she was doing everyone's hair and makeup the dancers, the performers. So she's passionate, she's hmm. clearly talented. She's just not used to this level of fame that comes with signing with Bad Boy Records. Some critics start questioning her vocal ability, suggesting that her studio recordings are just heavily edited and she can't even manage to replicate the same sound live. That's many people. Others use this as a way That's to be like, many, many, many she's people. not that talented. She's just I'd an say industry a vast plant. Majority. She's signed by Bad Boy Records because she's pretty. So she's signed with Diddy. She's dating a producer by the name of Ryan Leslie. She's not actually skilled. The negative press at the time was a lot. She's 19 years old. Her frontal lobe has not even fully developed, but everybody is treating her like she personally insulted their mothers. She's probably thinking my entire career is over at this point. But Diddy, the owner of her record label, comes in and he starts defending his artist. He tells MTV News, you could hear the nervousness in her voice. And to be honest, I kind of smiled at that because it made me appreciate what I really love about her. She's just a regular person. It just made me appreciate that she got nervous. It's kind of cute to me, to be honest. You've got to understand that success for her is coming out of nowhere. It's just huge and people deal with that differently. A lot of people could shut up after that. And they respected Diddy a lot for coming to his artist's defense, which is probably why Cassie felt comfortable and excited to perform at the MTV Europe Music Awards in Denmark later that year with Diddy. She flies 
all the way to Europe with Diddy. And during hair and makeup leading up to this performance, she's sitting in the makeup chair and her makeup artist is fixing her face, staring at her in the mirror and just states, Diddy's interested in you. Wait, she's dating someone though, right? Yeah, and Diddy's dating Kim Porter, okay? So this is very oh. crazy, you know? Cassie thought the whole thing was just gossip and honestly kind of gross. He's so old, he's practically <laughs> double her age. I mean, there's just no way. He's in a very public relationship with his longtime on and off girlfriend, the mother of his children, Kim Porter. Besides, she's publicly dating a producer by the name of Ryan Leslie, and he knows that. He's. I was just gonna say, I felt, even if I didn't know about the case and whatnot, if I heard his words at the time, I would have felt a little weirded about it. It's just the way he worded it, some stuff in there that kept calling her cute and stuff. It just doesn't really sound professional, all that professional. It just sounded a little weird. I was a little uncomfortable about it. He's friends with Ryan Leslie. But from what everybody has said about I was about like, Diddy, she's 19, he's he how old then? With someone, it's weird. There's really no way of saying no. The two enter into a very public relationship. And for the most part, they fit this very glamorous, jealousy-inducing public image. The music mogul leaves the mother of his child. It's, it's not explicit that it's due to Cassie. It seems like he's never really been a loyal person. Even with Kim Porter, he was cheating on her with multiple other people. He had children with other women while he was dating Kim Porter. It's a lot. We're going to get into it in episode two. Okay, but he Cannon. ends up publicly dating Cassie. And everyone thought the music mogul, the beautiful, talented girlfriend, they look good together. But behind closed doors, there were just some red flags in their relationship. So for example, really while he's publicly dating Cassie, he posts a tribute to one of the mothers of his children. So he's got three mothers of his children. Well, now four, but he captions it, Chance, their daughter's name. Chance and I are so grateful to have you in our lives. Love. Which is totally fine, but the picture he posts of the mother of his child is her in a bikini on the beach. Again, the picture is fine. I'm not mom shaming her. She looks incredible, but surely he had more appropriate pictures to post considering he's dating Cassie. It's her birthday. Maybe it's like just, a family it's photo. Weird. He also allegedly had drugs and pills out in the open, like candy. So those were a few red flags for Cassie. But again, maybe that's just what happens when you're dating a billionaire in the industry. They're eccentric. But sometimes he would do really strange, really questionable things. For example, according to a lawsuit, Cassie told Diddy that she calls her beloved grandfather Pop Pop. Immediately after that, Diddy insisted that Cassie call him Pop Pop. But they're dating. With this huge age gap. Ew. It feels a little perverse. But more alarming than that is they were constantly breaking up, getting back together. And while they're on a bit of a break, Cassie alleges that she had a brief, brief relationship with another musician by the name of Kid Cudi. And it seems that Diddy found out, found emails between Cassie and Kid Cudi. He was not happy. He tells Cassie, I'm going to blow up Kid Cudi's car, which I mean, no excuses for that, but it sounds like it's just someone's intense anger and jealousy speaking, right? I mean, it's Diddy. It's P. Diddy. Really? He's going to blow up another A-list musician's car? That's ridiculous. Mm, is it? January 9th, 2012, Kid Cudi's car blows up in his driveway. His Porsche goes up in flames at 11 a.m. in the morning. The report lists the cause of fire as intentional, a.k.a. arson, but the police don't know who did this? The police were never able to even figure out exactly who did it. But there were whispers that Diddy was going around stating that he ordered someone, allegedly, to slice open the car's convertible top, it's a Porsche convertible, and drop a Molotov cocktail inside was there to have a video the car blow up. Allegedly. In fact, there were always whispers about Diddy, if you're in the industry. There's whispers. You know why they People call were him talking Puff, about it. Or at least why they did call him Puff, don't you? There was a brief rumor that he got it in high school. He was on the football team, but because he was a bit skinny of a kid, he had this habit of puffing up his chest to look more intense. But most people say that's not actually why they call him Puff. That would be so or puffy. So goofy. Yeah. That's why he's called Puff Daddy. They like, say uh, it's a childhood name because he was always, I feel like the real reason is goofier. Okay. Because he was always angry. So he would walk around huffing and puffing. No. So they called him Puffy. No way. Puffy or Puff. Puffy, Puff, 
then it's Puff Daddy, then it's P Diddy, then it's Diddy, and now it's Brother Love. He even admitted in an interview once, I had a temper. That's why my friends started calling me Puffy. One industry source says they were at a party at Diddy's house and they left early because the whole party just felt uncomfortable. They just sat there watching Diddy yell at Cassie all night for honestly nothing. They later said, you could see it in Cassie's eyes that she's scared. And I'm like, is this normal? Am I tripping right now? Nah. Why is nobody saying anything? Are they all scared of him? Why is he screaming at her? Who said this? An industry source, anonymous. So there was always whispers that Diddy is not normal in the industry. Danielle, who Come wrote on. a piece for the New York Times, she's a journalist. She said that she was at a party. This is back in 2015, which by the way, she has a piece on New York Times. It's incredible. She's an amazing writer. This was back in 2015. She's at a party, one of those fancy ones where they have the little tuna bites and those singular spoons and the wait staff walk around. Cassie, who's normally always surrounded by Diddy's entourage, is walking around alone, which is very rare. She's wearing stilettos in the grass, but she's stunning. She's so graceful the way she, it's like she's barefoot, but even more so when she walks over to Danielle, gracefully squats down to be eye level and says, how are you? Fine, how are you? How are you doing it? Doing what? Like, how are you managing? Danielle describes feeling like Cassie could almost see through her. It's like she felt that it's very likely a mutual friend had told Cassie that someone that they all knew in the industry had essayed Danielle. Mm -hmm. This was a decade earlier, the incident, um, but Danielle couldn't confirm that. So she just felt anxious. It felt like Cassie was asking her, how are you doing it? Staying in the industry, going through all of this. So Danielle collected herself and tried to play it off like, girl, what? I, I'm fine. What are you talking about? It was this moment where both of them, she said it's both of them wanted to say something, but neither of them could find the words. Hey, let's go take a walk. Eventually, Cassie rose up gracefully, waved goodbye and walked off. Another close to the couple friend by proximity, Dawn Richards, she's a former Danity Kane member. She has her own lawsuit, which we're going to cover in episode three, but she has her own lawsuit against Diddy. And she stated that the first time she saw the two of them, Diddy and Cassie, she just felt uncomfortable. Diddy would get into Cassie's personal space. He would fixate on her with this very intense, unyielding stare. It was it's like he was weird. constantly trying to isolate her while there's other people in the room. Another friend of Cassie's would later detail how she was once in the car with Cassie. Diddy's calling on speakerphone, just screaming at her. She alleges he was like, what are you doing? She Cassie kept hanging up because he was screaming. And then he would call again. She'd pick up and he would scream, you don't hang up on me. Hey, dad. I mean, this does not seem like a normal relationship. It's not. In the new lawsuit filed by Cassie against Diddy in November of 2023, she states publicly that after her on and off relationship with Diddy from 2007 to 2018, it's she's crazy. finally ready to come clean. She says, quote, after years of silence and darkness, I'm finally ready to tell my story and to speak up on behalf of speak myself and for the benefit of other women who face violence and abuse in their relationships. With the expiration of the New York Adult Survivor Act fast approaching, it became clear this was an opportunity to speak up about the trauma that I had experienced and that I will be recovering from for the rest of my life. I am ready to tell my story and to speak up. She goes on to detail in depth about her experience with Diddy. She states that even the start of their relationship was not something she consented to. The lawsuit alleges that after Cassie's 21st birthday party, Diddy pulls her into the bathroom and forcibly starts making out with her. Cassie did not consent. She said she immediately ran out of the bathroom and started crying. She told her best friend what happened, but she doesn't know what to do because she's basically stuck in this 10 album contract with Bad Boy Records. Oh this is God. the founder and owner of Bad Boy Records that just forcibly kissed her. He knows she has a boyfriend. He's so influential in the industry. It's not like she can break the contract and go somewhere else. She's just started. She had like one hit Song. That's it. It appears that she hoped that running out of the bathroom is a signal enough. It's a no without telling him, don't ever do that again. And it's just so disheartening the amount of stories that these artists come out with that happened to them when they were young. Just the really traumatizing stories that they tell when they're older. And they just reveal everything that happened to them when they were younger in the industry. 
like behind closed doors by these super powerful people, super powerful, influential. Like if you snitch, you're not, I'm going to make sure your life is hell. You're not going to get any more opportunities. Like it's so, it's just so depressing. And pissing him off and maybe and scary. making him angry. But no, just how Diddy allegedly keeps feel. demanding she come spend time with him, quote, for work. On one of those occasions, he hands her this pill and told her to take it. He wouldn't tell her what it was, but she was so scared she just swallowed it. Later, she said she realized it was ecstasy. Oh my something gosh. she had never tried before and never wanted to do. And it just gets worse from there. There were always drugs being pushed onto Cassie. The lawsuit states, as she wanted Mr. Combs to continue to support her career, she felt she could not refuse Mr. Combs urging for her to take more drugs. Diddy would often have pills and other drugs out in the open like, quote, candy. Within two years of meeting Mr. Combs, Ms. Ventura found herself lured to, into this immediate circle of her boss, the owner of her record label, and one of the most powerful men in the entertainment industry. Mr. Combs's aggressive and demanding approach to those he worked with made it impossible for anyone to challenge him, and Ms. Ventura soon learned that Mr. Combs insisted on blind loyalty from everyone in his inner circle. He also rented out apartments in New York City and Los Angeles for her. They were both in walking distance to his residences in both cities. He paid for everything in her life, her houses, her cars, which, yes, sounds great, but that's a really high level of control he yeah. now has over yeah. a 21-year-old. Hey. And it's not even just the purchasing of things. There was one instance, due to his alleged abuse, Cassie had to get an MRI. You would think that she's safe at the doctors, but even the doctors send the MRI results directly to Diddy and not to her. Why? The lawsuit alleges throughout their relationship, Mr. Combs was prone to uncontrollable rage and frequently beat Miss Ventura savagely. These beatings were witnessed by Mr. Combs' staff and employees of Bad Boy Entertainment and Mr. Combs' related businesses, but no one dared to speak up against their frightening and ferocious boss. It is stated that Diddy's head of security and his own assistant, when they saw the extent of some of Cassie's injuries, in one instance, it was two black eyes, a burst and bruised lip, and a huge welt on her forehead. They cried. They started crying. But it seems like they didn't do much to stop it. One former employee says, Diddy doesn't believe in being told no. And if you get caught up in the wrath of See, that, and that's the problem. Dangerous. The lawsuit states that the injuries on Cassie were allegedly so bad that Diddy would come to his senses, realizes, oh yeah, these are brutal, literal crimes, felonies that I've committed. And he would hide his girlfriend Cassie in his house or hotels to make sure she's not seen or photographed with all the injuries that he inflicted on her. While he's holding her hostage, in a sense, he would bombard her with gifts, words of affirmation, uh, trying to get her back, which he would just get his assistants to buy a bunch of luxury gifts, have them delivered to the hotel room where she's being allegedly held hostage. And is she still like 21 around that age at that time? Because just how conflicting she must feel and scared, just so confused of uh, how controlling her boss, I guess her forced on boyfriend is is of her life and just beating her relentlessly continuously and then another minute just love bombing her and if that doesn't work he would just remind her of how powerful he is once she alleges an assistant tracked her down and told her point blank hey if you don't answer his calls your single is never going to be released like your songs they're never gonna nothing will happen or they would just say ominous things like, it's in your best interest to call Mr. Combs back. That's Cassie alleges bizarre. he would do this thing where he made her carry his gun in her purse. She's not familiar with guns and Frame she's terrified her. that it would go off in her purse, but he gave her zero reason on why he even wanted her to put it in her purse. I mean, it seems like he just did it to instill fear in Cassie to show her how terrifying he is. Some other instances of alleged violence include once after a party with Jay-Z on the way back home, Diddy beat Cassie in an Escalade by kicking and hitting her. He told the driver to stop the car, made her get out on the street of New York City, and just left. At another party, Diddy saw her speaking with a man, and it's likely about work stuff, but he did not care. Oh he asked God. her to step into the bedroom. It's a hotel after party. So it's one of those large suites with bedrooms, like a apartment. He steps into the bedroom, and he just starts beating her. 
while there's a whole party happening outside. She said that she ran from corner to corner of the room to try and avoid him, and eventually she found herself curled up behind the toilet while he was stomping on her. Nobody could hear her scream because of the loud music. That's crazy. In another instance, it wasn't Cassie that he harmed. Once, Cassie was at home with a friend of hers named Carrie. Diddy comes in unannounced, which Carrie did not appreciate, it seems. Likely, she knew that Diddy was doing all these things to Cassie, and the two of them, Diddy and Carrie, they get into an altercation where Diddy throws a hanger at Carrie. The two settled it. Diddy and Cassie end up paying her for the dispute, and ever since then, Cassie's friendship with Carrie just strained. Oh my which is God. just the way that Diddy isolates her from everyone. Also, this isn't the first time. Allegedly, he did this with another friend of Cassie's by forcing Cassie to listen to what he wanted. He was like, if you're not going to do what I want, fine. He picks up her friend, allegedly, and dangles her off the 17th floor balcony. What? what? This is in the lawsuit? Yes. He dangled a human outside the balcony? Yes. I th I'm sure he was, like, cradling her more. What? Another time, they were at a party in L.A. Cassie thought Diddy would be proud and excited that she was networking. She spoke with this music manager in hopes of growing her career. But when Diddy finds out he's not happy, he's enraged. He drags her out of the party into the car. He's beating her, pushing her into a corner of the vehicle, quite literally, allegedly stomping on her face. Cassie's lawsuit states Roger <sighs> Bonds, one of Diddy's security staff, tried to stop the beating, which he does cooperate in an interview but he is unable to de-escalate the situation. When they get to Diddy's house, Cassie tries to make a run for it, but he chases after her and kicks her in the face again. She's bleeding profusely at this point. She gets ushered into his house where she starts throwing up from the violent assault. Once they got in the house, Diddy, he starts realizing, wait, the extent of her injuries, she's got to go to a hotel to heal. She's not allowed to leave this hotel for an entire week while healing. It's in this hotel room that Cassie stated she starts fully realizing, quote, that Mr. Combs tremendously loyal network not only knew about and witnessed his assaults, but also these witnesses were not willing to do anything meaningful to stop Mr. Combs's behavior. What you want? What? What you got to say now? That, this is, oh my God. Okay. Okay. <sighs> All right. We're, we're going to watch this. This just scene right there, her under the blanket or whatever she's hiding under is so heartbreaking Ugh. what you gotta say now it's like a kid say, hiding when you put your girl on the snap she recognized she was powerless and reporting him to the authorities would not alter his status or influence it would just merely give him another excuse to hurt her Exactly. She said, from that point forward, she was terrified, isolated, and unable to see a pathway out of Mr. Combs' abusive hold on her life. She found herself numb to the abuse that she was experiencing. She began to blindly follow his instructions out of fear of, again, being on the receiving end of a vicious beating. It's even more depressing when they get used to it and they're just like, oh, this is my norm. Like, I'm not even, I'm sure they still feel fear, but not to the extent of what it is they're just numb to it it's like oh my god here he comes again you hear footsteps and sounds angry just protect yourself and you just become a shell of a human tiffany red is a grammy winning songwriter and musician herself she helped produce replay by zendaya boss for nctu and songs for cassie in fact Tiffany <gasps> what Rebrandia, Boss for NCTU and songs for Cassie. That's crazy. In fact, Tiffany Red remembers it was all very odd. I mean, she had written this song for Cassie called Loyal. The two of them had been working on it together. And the first verse reads, I don't know what is real. I just know how I feel. And you keep acting like you don't know what you did wrong. Trying to get me to chill. Since we ain't been together, I've been on some whatever. Tiffany could tell that Diddy did not like Cassie singing those lyrics, or at least that's the initial vibe that she got. And she thought it was weird. They did she write that or Cassie wrote that? Both of them together. Mm. Now, they've been in a stable relationship for like a decade. I mean, yes, they're on and off, but still, it's just a song. It's not that serious, but it does indeed get serious. I don't know. I think to some extent, there are obviously songs that are just like made up, just story, just a fairy tale. And there are some songs where there's some verses that's just like, wait. For the most part, I don't take lyrics that seriously, but there are some artists whose lyrics you really have to look into. 
but still it's just a song it's not that serious but it does indeed get serious Tiffany actually penned an open letter to Diddy when all of this starts unraveling and she explains how she's a longtime friend of Cassie's and yeah she has seen the abuse she says to Diddy, I first met you in person in August of 2015 at a surprise party you threw for Cassie's 29th birthday at a hotel in Los Angeles. I was at her old apartment before the party with friends, rushed by calls from your team about her ETA. We were in a frenzy to get her ready without spoiling the surprise. We all piled into a black car service from her place to the party. We arrived at the area reserved for her party at the hotel and you popped out singing happy birthday. There were so many friends, a few famous faces and cameras recording as we sang. She was definitely surprised. Up until that point, I'd only spoken to you once before on FaceTime with Cassie about songs we were working on together. You approached me that day and you introduced yourself saying, so you're the one writing all those songs about me. I said yes, and you stared back and said, that means she's talking to you, huh? I was uncomfortable because it seemed like you were talking about the more turbulent parts of your relationship. Kind of Tiffany threatening also claims approach. that one of Diddy's security guards came up to her once and said something along the lines of, I heard a lot about you, Tiffany. She said, you both creep me out. And this interaction was super intimidating. It felt like you both wanted me to know that you knew who I was and you didn't like how close I was to her. Wait, wait, wait. wait. What was the lyrics again? Like what exactly was said that got Diddy so offended? That she doesn't think he's being loyal. That got Diddy this emotional? Yes. It's so insecure. Later that evening, during the surprise birthday party, it started in the afternoon, so around nighttime, they all decided to go to a karaoke spot called the Blind Dragon. But only a few of the oh, girlies shoot, were wanting cool. to go. Tiffany Red writes, but you weren't happy that she was leaving. I remember your people hovering around us, trying to discourage Cassie from leaving, but we went anyway. You followed us and arrived just a little bit later after we did. It was instantly uncomfortable. You pulled Cassie out of the private karaoke room. She put her head down and went with you. I followed outside to see if she was okay because something was off. When I walked out of the room, you had her backed into the corner of the hallway outside of the door and your security surrounded you two as you cursed her out with your hands in her face. These are all Tiffany Red's allegations, by the way. She and I briefly made eye contact. I felt helpless. She looked afraid and I kept looking down at the floor. I didn't know what to do. I was scared. Tiffany explains that in her allegations that the party was over at that point because Diddy wanted Cassie on her 29th birthday to come with him, leave her friends and do what he wants to do on her birthday, which is already alarming, but that's nothing compared to what actually happens, or at least according to multiple different accounts, but still alleged since there's no recording of this incident. Tiffany mm. said Cassie pulled her I don't need recordings. Awesome. Can you guys just go back to my place and stay the night? Jail. I I'll be back later. I mean, I have to go back to the house right now to gather my stuff. Go with Diddy and I'll be back. And we can have like a little birthday sleepover. Clearly something about the whole situation, the way that Diddy was asking and the way that Cassie was asking them, Tiffany says, I said yes because I was worried that Diddy would hurt her. Prior to this incident, Cassie confirmed He's to me going that to you anyways. were a physically abusive person and the way you were in her face that night was so alarming to me. I didn't want to leave her alone. When we got back to her house, she kept saying to us she didn't want to go with you, but you were already on your way to pick her up. One of her friends was packing an overnight bag for her. I'll never forget it. It was the biggest Birkin bag I've ever seen. It was blue. I kept asking why they're packing Cassie's stuff if clearly she didn't want to go with Diddy. And this person said, she always goes. Diddy arrives at the door and you whisked her away. Cassie looked uneasy. I didn't know where you were taking her. Once you left, the person who packed the bag- And these are her friends? That's wild. I, listen, I don't know. I don't know. You could say you're going to do something, but once you're put in that position in that point in time, what you say you're going to likely do is most likely the opposite of what you would most likely do in that situation. Because just hearing this, you would be like, oh, I would never let my friend get just pushed over like that and abused like that. I love my friend. I would protect her, get her away from that situation. But if you're in that situation like Red and you see that happening, you know, these people are celebrities. This is someone who's very powerful and influential, got a whole bunch of bodyguards around them versus if this was like IRL, I guess, not to that um, extent, these are just regular people, then you might have a little bit more courage and 
you know, more people would come around and try to help. But in that situation, I'm sure you would probably feel like a helpless unless you're like a real firecracker and don't care. But Sorry. even then, they'll be back. It's Watch. It was almost like we had seen this movie before. Tiffany was worried, but there's not really much that she could have done in that moment considering everything. She says that she fell asleep in Cassie's room and, quote, a few hours later, I was woken up by you screaming, emotional singing, bitch, where are you? What? Yeah, that's what Tiffany claims. It's like three or four in the morning. Tiffany walks out of the bedroom where she had fallen asleep, and she's face to face with Diddy, who allegedly says, emotional singing, bitch, there you are. Tiffany said she didn't even know that he was talking about her, but now she's like, what? She feels terrified, humiliated, confused, but ultimately freaking scared. And he starts allegedly screaming, tell your girl she needs some birthday dick. I flew all the way from Miami and she's going to get this birthday dick. Tiffany Ew. is terrified. He seems furious and she tries to respond. She doesn't have to I'm have sex with you if she doesn't want to. Disgusted. But allegedly, Diddy keeps screaming around Cassie's house, she gonna get this dick. That sounds so... Which I guess at that point, what Diddy wants, Diddy gets because of how abusive and violent he allegedly is. The two, Diddy and Cassie, end up driving off again in a golf cart since he lives down the street. Tiffany said she watched from the balcony that it was terrifying. She alleges Diddy was driving the golf cart speeding and she says, I thought you were going to get pulled over and go to jail or crash from being so high. It was like a real life scary movie. I was terrified for Cassie and she later told me that you made her have a freak off that night. Okay, Freak so we're getting into According it. According to Cassie's lawsuit, within um, they started happening within a few months of dating. Diddy kept telling Cassie that he wanted to engage in this fantasy with her called <sighs> voyeurism. He explained it's a fantasy of watching others engage in intimate activities. He allegedly said it would, quote, turn him on if he saw Miss Ventura with another dick. Bro, oh my God. Why do I keep hearing these stories about these guys who have these fantasies like they are the most repulsive illegal type fantasies that are I just heard they're just so disgusting they don't sound real but they're very much real what is the what's the deal what is happening it's just not normal it's not healthy like a whole being cucked is that is that your fantasy like that chair in the in the corner of the room of the hotel just angled at the bed is that you just sit in that chair that's what that's what you want that's your fantasy somebody else's fantasy is like wanting their sexual partner to like reject them and stuff like and act like they don't want it like what that sounds jail and other people just being so turned on aroused and wanting to do things around when there's little kids around them like like something in the world is happening that these types of people are engaging with in their everyday life and there needs to be a stop to that there needs to be a huge change because it's just not healthy it's not normal it's just getting more and more out of control the first time it happens, Diddy hires a man, brings him to his LA mansion. He forces that man and Cassie and himself to wear masquerade masks, take drugs. The whole time he's sitting there and allegedly instructing Cassie on what to do to this man while he's watching and self-pleasuring. Wasn't there a movie like this? I swear I saw a movie like this. Maybe it was Tom Cruise in it? Oh. This encounter according to the lawsuit, lasted multiple days. Uh, so it seems like he's drugging everyone, allegedly keeping everyone on drugs so that they can keep going. He starts referring to these events as freak offs or an F.O., if you will. I don't After know the what first that movie time, was randomly called. Diddy would call Cassie and tell him he wanted an F.O. It Eventually, he would even make her coordinate them, picking the location, usually hotels, hiring the male workers. He forced her allegedly to go online and find these men to have these encounters with and specifically told her to search for, quote, large black penis. Oh, my God. He would even uh, fly these men around the U.S. to meet up with Cassie and Diddy so that he could watch them having intimate relations with his girlfriend against her will. While Cassie is doing that, Diddy is picking out lingerie that he wants her to wear. He's making sure that her nails are painted white. He allegedly liked to have her white nails to, quote, 
in paraphrase terms, contrast to the skin of the black men that he was hiring to have with her. Diddy's assistants would be sent to the hotel to set up the FOs, which by the way, there's a Conan O'Brien segment. Conan O'Brien was like, I heard this rumor that you don't actually ever check into a hotel by yourself. Like you are not a normal person. You don't check in and like, oh, where's my room? Is it you a rumor? send people to check in for truth? you and get the room ready. And he says, yeah, like they got to make it sexy before I arrive. So he would have his assistants send to the hotel to set up for the FO, set up with baby oil, Astroglide, all these things. And there are also allegedly a ton of drugs present, ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, alcohol. Honestly, it's the only thing that let Cassie disassociate from these encounters. There's so much coordination happening for just one of these encounters. It's really hard to say how many people on Diddy's team were involved in these arrangements. Another odd part of the routine is after the freak offs, they would get IV fluids to recover from all the heavy drug usage. These freak offs became more and more frequent, sometimes happening once a week. Clearly, Cassie hated it, but he kept telling her it was I mean, their duh. thing, their secret. And allegedly, he would even instruct her to talk to these workers and would specifically instruct where to touch them. He would say things like, quote, grab that big black dick. How does it feel? You can't just watch porn. Like, why do you have to have it reenacted? It's just so uncomfortable hearing this and just uh, how many cases like this there are in the world currently, even scarier to think about. This is in the lawsuit, but sometimes he would just beat her during freak offs in front of the workers. Side note, he would pay the men a few thousand dollars in cash for their services and probably to make Cassie feel more disgusting, it seems, he would present her with gifts during the freak offs. The lawsuit states at one point she had she had so many designer bracelets from the freak offs and immediately following his brutal beatings, he would gift her bracelets, designer bracelets, that she felt that she was shackled by his presence. I'm so sorry. I'm such a visual person. So whenever I hear these things, I like visualize it in my head. It's like I'm watching an, a movie as she's talking. I'm like visualizing these things and I'm just visualizing those moments and Oh my God, I want to just scrape my brain and just douse it with like holy water or something. Just bleach. Ugh. Oh, it's disgusting. The lawsuit alleges during the freak offs, in addition to directing Miss Ventura and masturbating, Mr. Combs would use his phone, laptop, and tablet to film Miss Ventura having sex with the hired workers he treated the force encounter as like a personal art project adjusting right? the candles he used for lighting to frame the videos he took just just it it just sounds so meticulous and detailed like everything that everything being set up all the things that are being involved having her pick these sex workers and the specific types of sex workers he's looking for to the white nail polish because it contrasts between the skin and the polish color. Like he's so detailed and meticulous with this whole thing. It's like, he really thinks so thoroughly about it. Like how did it get to that point? Sometimes he would use Cassie's phone to take those videos and pictures and she would immediately delete them after because why would she want that on why her phone? Why would she look but at he that? he would just mock her. Oh, you know I can recover that. Like that's crazy which is kind of a hard to believe statement of, no, that's crazy. You're crazy. How can you recover? It's my phone. I deleted it and I deleted it from my recently deleted. What do you mean? Well, not too long after that, they're on his plane heading to another city and he forces her to sit next to him and plays her a video that she believes she had deleted from her phone. So maybe he sent it to his phone before it was, I don't know. That is crazy. But he had it playing on the plane and forced her to watch the entire thing. She started developing this intense fear and anxiety for these freak offs and she would become physically ill every time he demanded one. She would just start throwing up when he told her he wanted to freak off and he would see this, convince her that she needed to do this and would shame her for saying no. Bro, I feel like throwing up just listening to it. Like imagine actually being in it. Just how disgusted you must feel with yourself which is so unfortunate because it's not your fault it's just just being so forced into it like it's and depressing work he would beat her 
There was one time where Cassie said she was ready to leave. She's trying to move on and briefly entered into a romantic relationship with Kid Cudi. But Diddy kept calling her for more freak offs, more freak offs. And out of fear, she went. And during oh, that no. freak off, I don't know if he stole her phone or forced her to let him have it. He ends up finding emails between Cassie and Kid Cudi. He freaks out. He puts a corkscrew, a wine corkscrew in between his fingers and starts lunging at Cassie, allegedly, according to the lawsuit. She was terrified. She ran out of there and briefly went to stay with Kid Cudi. He's calling her, threatening her. I'm going to blow up his car. She leaves his house, goes to her parents' house because she's scared. And sure enough, his car explodes in his driveway. Since then, others have come forward with their alleged freak-off experiences, including one of Diddy's alleged drug dealers. So the word freak-offs, these parties, they've kind of merged into different variations. Cassie's freak-offs that she lists in her lawsuit seem like more intimate <sighs> encounters where she's forced to engage in activities with one, two different people in front of Diddy, right? But um, some people have stated he would just have like these freaky parties allegedly again this could be someone that's never met diddy a day in his life until things are proven in the court of law take everything with a grain of salt no but this alleged drug it's dealer not that hard to that believe he once went to diddy's mansion in the hamptons to drop off a shipment of supplies if you will diddy opens the door in nothing but a robe brings him to a back bedroom to make the deal and that's when he sees quote weird shit weird shit was starting to happen celebrity guys fucking each other they were in the back bedrooms and it was like the inner sanctum he states, there were a lot of people at that party, female rappers, workers, they were already high on what seemed to be ketamine and GHB, basically rude fees, to which the drug dealer alleges, you could see two people you would not think would be hooking up, rappers, that's what shocked me. I won't say names, but there were rappers that I immediately lost respect for and could never take seriously again, which like, what is that supposed to mean? But he continues, that's when I got the f out of there. This is a statement he made without any names yes. mentioned? Now, this could be a total lie, complete and utter lie, but he's claiming he was Diddy's drug dealer and he saw these freak offs. So that's why I'm telling you the word freak offs, these parties are kind of merging. And then some people believe that all of Diddy's parties are freak offs, that the, everyone that went to the white party should be burned at the stake. But then some people are saying, no, it's the after parties like what this drug dealer is describing, that's the problem. And then some people are saying, no, it's the encounters that he's forcing these people into, like Cassie, that are the freak offs. Mm -hmm. So it's unclear. It could be all of the above. We I, don't know. All of the above. Until I think the it's trial. all of the above. Yes. It's hard to say which is more off the hook, a Diddy party or a Diddy after party, or a Diddy after after party, which is basically a pre-party for the next Diddy party. There are a lot of allegations and lawsuits that women had attended his white parties and then they were essayed at those parties. But I don't know if wow. those are freak offs. So it's like right. terminology, I guess, at that point. Right, right, right. And those lawsuits, we will get into part two. Now, he does note that he never saw Diddy himself partake in any sexual activity. But there seems to be a slightly different variation of freak offs, like I said, from what Cassie is alleging. So in this episode, we're just going through Cassie's version of freak offs and how they would be conducted. Tiffany Red also states that the only time that Cassie's music ever advanced, Diddy was ever willing to talk to Cassie about her business and her music was if she participated in freak offs. In fact, he would force her to listen to her demos and her songs during the freak off allegedly he would play the songs that they're working on during the alleged freak offs tiffany red claims all these years all those songs that we worked on i mean to find out all those years i spent all this time writing these songs for him to my friend to them tiffany red said i mean even his speech at the bet awards right cassie had moved on finally for the past four years yeah and also cassie for holding me down in the dark times Love. It's like harassment, she says. You're still f***ing with her. Leave her alone. Leave her f alone. Another source says he tries to paint a picture of being this heartbroken man after Cassie left, but he's just a liar and an abuser. Exactly It that. feels like a threat, just like what happened when she did leave him. Cassie states in her lawsuit that in September 2018, she finally decides to leave Diddy. The two of them meet up at an Italian restaurant in Malibu where she confirms, yes, I'm serious, I'm done. Like, you can have all your stuff back, I'm over it. 
The dinner went okay. After dinner, he drops her off at her place, but instead of letting her leave, he allegedly forces himself into the apartment, tries to kiss her. She obviously tells him no because she's done, but instead of leaving, he allegedly forcibly takes off her clothes, unbuckles his belt, and proceeds to essay Cassie while she claims she repeatedly told him no and is trying to push him away. Soon after, Cassie leaves the apartment that he was paying for, leaves everything like the car that he paid for and manages to get out of her bad boy records contract. And coincidentally, a few months after she moved away, she gets doxxed. Her new address gets posted online, which leads to her feeling paranoid and terrified, rightfully so. But there is a question of, if this all happened in 2018, why is she just now in the end of 2023 filing the lawsuit? The two, Cassie and Could Diddy, broke up in 2018 reasons. after a decade of dating, like I said. Cassie moves on, remarries her personal trainer, Alex Fine, in 2019, and appears that he really helped her recover from not just the physical, emotional, mental trauma, but just everything. She was also had an unhealthy relationship with drugs and alcohol because of how Diddy would push them onto her, allegedly. She said it Especially was established at a young and age. by Mr. Combs. They would briefly help ease the pain. Even afterwards, she would have these horrific nightmares of the freak off. She had difficulty sleeping and eating. She starts having thoughts of self-exiting. It's not until she ends up having two daughters that she feels like she, quote, was safe from the trauma that had consumed over a decade of her life. Cassie went to rehab to deal with the repercussions of her time with Diddy, and she said that being a mom gave her a renewed purpose. And in 2023, Cassie sues him thanks to the New York Adult Survivors Act, which essentially created this look back window. Adult survivors could file civil lawsuits against their abusers, so not criminal lawsuits, like civil lawsuits, mm -hmm. regardless of when the abuse occurred and if the statute of limitations for the civil lawsuits was over. Is this a new law in New York or? It was a one year window that what? gave survive. So it's because a lot of people need a lot of time to even come terms with what happened. And yeah. we would hope that now is a lot more accepting of an environment for survivors, even though we still have a long ways to How go. How is that only one year window? That's though? what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it was so crazy. Just there's still people who just how many people from being abused in their younger years and just constantly denying that they have been abused throughout their adult years and then just so on and so forth just pushing it down constantly like like denying it and just not coming to terms with it and it's just so sad uh, just just seeing the how these people operate versus people who felt the went through the exact same experience but did come to terms with it and though not easy by any means they work through it and are a much better person for survivors even though we still have a long ways to oh, go is that only one year window that's what a I'm year saying, yeah but it was a one-year window for people to sue their abusers and seek that justice that they might finally be strong enough to look for and in that wow. one-year window over three thousand lawsuits were filed under the act including cassie ventura's which Diddy is arguing is false, 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 false. It's a money grab. Diddy's team, in essence, their argument boils down to Cassie is a cheater. She cheated on Diddy and she willingly participated in those freak offs, but now she's upset and wants to get more money out of Diddy, basically alleging her of orchestrating a shakedown to get this money. His attorney, Ben Braffman, says for the past six months, Mr. Combe has been subjected to Ms. Ventura's persistent demand of $30 million under the threat of writing a damaging uh, book about their relationship, more. which was unequivocally rejected as blatant blackmail. Despite Sir, withdrawing her initial threat, Ms. Ventura has now resorted shut to up. filing a lawsuit riddled with baseless and outrageous lies. And he's doing his job, but like, shut Mr. up. Combe's reputation and seek a payday. To which Cassie's attorney responded, but you already offered her eight figures to prevent her from filing this lawsuit, which we rejected. What? So Cassie said that he tried to pay her eight figures and she's rejected that. Her attorney stated. Wow. The public arguments are over after these statements because within a business day, 24 hours, Cassie and Diddy settle for an undisclosed amount. There is a number circulating that she settled for 30 million, but that seems to be taken from a statement Diddy's attorney made where Cassie allegedly demanded $30 million or else she would write a book. She could have settled for 30 million. Honestly, I hope a lot more because he's worth a billion dollars. Wait, so she filed this lawsuit a day later, she withdrew it. No, or 
or they settled. They settled. Right, right, right. So, yes. so we're still able to access the lawsuit. Yes. So I would say him settling is not an admission of guilt. Yeah. However, you it's very beneficial for him to settle. It's not beneficial for her to settle unless she is just she doesn't want this in the news for her family. She doesn't want to keep going down this fight because it's a long fight. But for him, it's very beneficial because once you go into discovery, yeah. More things are going to come out into the open. Yeah. Evidence has to be brought up. Yeah. Will this be mentioned during next year's trial? Or? Yes, because she settled in a civil lawsuit where likely they signed an airtight NDA where they cannot mention each other or talk about each other or wage any other public accusations against each other. However, in a criminal lawsuit, she can be called to testify. That does not bar her from testifying or working with federal investigators. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's good. Now, she could have settled for 30 million, I hope a lot more, but the exact amount has not been disclosed to the public. Cassie released a statement after the settlement stating, I have decided to resolve this matter amicably on terms that I have some level of control. And again, you know, I think it's just so much trauma to go yeah. through. And of course, Diddy's attorneys are gonna be slinging dirt at everybody, it's just rough. She says, I wanna thank my family, fans and lawyers for their unwavering support. Diddy releases his own statement. We have decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Cassie and her family all the best love his attorney also butts in and says just so we're clear a decision to settle a lawsuit especially in 2023 is in no way of admission of wrongdoing throw it in the paper decision to settle the lawsuit does not in any way undermine his flat-out denial of the claims he is happy they got to a mutual settlement and wishes miss ventura the best now again it's very interesting because net is in state for it just sounds so passive aggressive why she would settle Mm -hmm. she got her truth out there she's warning other women and now she doesn't have to go through this whole process that's going to take so much of her life, take so much money. She's going to have so many problems to deal with. This could be the best way for her to heal. Mm-hmm. Now, for Diddy, people are saying, why would you settle if you're not guilty? Even though technically, legally, yeah. it's just a little weird. Yeah. It's just weird, buddy. Now, the lawsuit is filed November 16th, and they settle the day after. And for a while, everybody stays a bit quieter because... It's unclear what any of that really means. I will say most people are thankfully on Cassie's side, but a good chunk, they just want to reserve their opinions for later until another lawsuit hits Diddy, then another. In total, 11 lawsuits would hit Diddy back to back. After Cassie's lawsuit. Yes. And then he will be hit with that federal raid on his houses, on both of his homes in March 2024 for an investigation into trafficking. Now the questions are open again, what the hell is going on? And none of Diddy's attorney's comments are even making sense. I will say a lot of the serious allegations do briefly get overshadowed by the baby oil memes, which Diddy's attorney doesn't really make it any better. Diddy's attorney has tried to argue about the copious, unfathomable, frankly bizarre amounts of baby oil in his possession. He's got a big house. Americans, as we know, buy in bulk. There's a Costco down the street. I mean, this is what, what? consensual adults doing what Bro, consensual she adults do. Stupid. We can't Shut get so puritanical in this country to think that somehow this is a bad thing because if it was, there would be no more people. He says it wasn't a thousand baby bottle oils, but it was a lot. And I'm not sure what the baby oil has to do with anything. He has a big house. He buys in bulk. You know, I think they have Costco's in every place where he has a home. Which Costco responded to this statement stating, we do not sell baby oil in any of our U.S. Which I would Costco- not hire this man. Big- I would not hire this man. Just look. He talks. House, he buys in bulk. You know, I think. To, uh, like, they have sorry, sit down. In every place where Go, he has a home. leave. Which Costco responded to this statement stating, we do not sell baby oil in any of our U.S. locations. Keep our name out your mouth. That's crazy. Basically. Yeah, even they don't Co- sell baby oils? No, not in the what? U.S. Even Costco wants nothing to do with Diddy. Right. To which people have responded, I don't think anyone questioned where he was getting the baby oil. His lawyer is so unserious. Diddy is all lubed up and slipping through the bars in his cell. His lawyer is trying to get Diddy a Costco commercial at this point. Now, side note, the cost of baby oil, like we said, is probably like $10,000 for a thousand bottles, but it's going to cost Diddy a lot more. Cassie alleges in her lawsuit that Diddy would instruct her to pour excessive amounts of oil all over herself. And once in a 2013 incident at the Intercontinental Hotel in New York City, he was charged tens of thousands of dollars in damages by the hotel after an FO. It's unclear if it's a direct cause of the baby oil, but I'm sure baby oil is not easy to clean. 
But perhaps it is, I don't know, because for months, nothing happens to Diddy. He gets sued in November 2023. His homes are raided March 2024. He will not get arrested until September 2024. For five months, he is free and he is showing off that freedom. He posts videos of himself standing by the ocean, staring down a tropical storm. His arms are outstretched to a pastor's voice saying, not hysterical not frantic, not anxious, not fretful, but steady in the storm. I'm free as a mother. Mm. He also goes whitewater rafting with his friends and it seems like he's living the life because at this point, his lawsuit is settled. The feds raided his house and have nothing. That means maybe they have nothing on him. He's free to go on his yachts, go on his plane, and he's always denied the allegations against him. Duh, he really he's going to bad, deny it. Arrested, right? And of course, naturally, people just want to hate on Cassie, believing that her lawsuit was a money grab. One that is in comments, she had the option to leave. She participated in her own misery. If a man puts his hands on you, just go. She, oh my God, people like this are so insufferable. You can't, ugh. no matter how much you try to knock sense into them, they're always going to come out with the same. And she could have left. So she decided to stay there. So it's like, no, oh my God, I hate art. I can't, I'd never argue with these types of people. They cause the biggest migraine. So insufferable. Which is insane. Insane. Another comment reads, she knew about all the freak offs and didn't say anything for over a decade. Someone else comments, some women are willing to endure abuse for money. If she could do it all over again and get the money, I believe she would still be with Puff. She left Ryan Leslie, a handsome musical genius for Diddy. Such a gold digger move. Not sure why she gets so much sympathy. She outed him for money, not justice. Wow. Another comment reads, some women pretend to be into all that freaky stuff to keep a man. She was always receiving money gifts and a lifestyle most people will never live. She decided at the time it was a good idea and then she grew up and realized how nasty the whole thing was and wanted out. I don't think Diddy made her do something she didn't want to do at the time. It was fun until it wasn't. Some allege that she might have put her hands on him first because, quote, some women like to do that. Mental they like asylum. to put their hands Go. on a man just to see what that man will do insinuating that Cassie was violent first. What on earth is going on? Some of these just have to be trolls. They're just trying to get a lot of engagement and make just a whole bunch of ruckus because there's no way. I know there's people like this that are so genuine and think this to be true, but a lot of these, like a handful of these, they just have to be trolling. On right now thankfully this is the smaller group of netizens but there's also a guy named boozy and he's a rapper but i think he's just a certified hater he states this about cassie and sounds like a boss. hater name either she was traumatized by what she went through she was sick yeah, and she's hurt got the looks or she of it loved too. every minute of it either she was traumatized she was sick and hurt or she loved every minute of so can you choke yeah, kind of. on those necklaces like a lot of comments point out your eyes already bugging her getting a settlement which what's wrong with that Okay, they comment, he never planned music for her. It's like he signed her just to date her. He had bad intentions from the get-go. From the very beginning, I mean, you can just tell he had bad intentions. Because he mentioned that the world would love her music, but she barely got to create music and music videos. They also state that there's a lot of people backing Cassie's story. Cassie's alleged former makeup artist has th since gone on to CNN to allege that she was privy to an incident in 2010 where Diddy beat Cassie in a hotel room. She remembers being so scared. She starts packing Cassie's things, gets her out of there, brings her to her home, but they were too scared to call the police. Roger Bonds, who claims to be a former bodyguard for Diddy, that he was also listed in the lawsuit, states that he believes Cassie a thousand percent. He alleges he himself has seen Diddy put his hands on Cassie. He states, quote, if Cassie was talking to somebody else, he would lose his mind. Just a side thought, though. A lot of these things, occurrences are happening in a hotel. Surely there's like other people in that hotel. I'm sure you didn't rent a hotel just for yourselves. Like no one else heard anything through the walls. These aren't like soundproof walls. Unless people decided to mind their own business or something like nothing, nothing like that. He also confirmed sometimes he would just leave her places and not come back for her. Like remember she alleged he would just leave her in New York City to just stop on the side of the road after beating her and then push her out the car. 
In addition to that, he alleges everybody was afraid of Puff. A lot of people knew what was going on, but nobody said anything. He just nobody seems said like nothing. such a big I'm glad baby. I'm she's speaking her truth. I hope she gets justice. He seems so immature. But the most detailed corroborating evidence is actually from another lawsuit filed by Don Richards, former Danity Kang member who was managed by Diddy. It's a group that Diddy formed. There were lots of allegations in her lawsuit that we're going to get to in part three, but the ones pertaining to Cassie said she saw Diddy beating, choking, punching, slapping, and throwing things at Cassie. She said one time she saw Cassie making eggs for him for breakfast. Diddy comes barreling down the stairs, pissed off, high on drugs, or at least he looked like he was high on drugs, according to Don's version of events. She claims he starts screaming, I've been asking you for my shit. I can't stand you. You never do anything right. She claims he pushes Cassie against the wall, starts choking her before picking up the scalding hot pan of eggs and throwing it at her, causing her to fall into the ground into a fetal position. Diddy isn't done though. He keeps cursing at Cassie and allegedly dragging her up the stairs. Another incident, she allegedly saw Diddy attack Knife. Cassie in a van, in grabbing back. her by the no, neck, dragging right her out of the van into the ground, choking her while yelling, you're gonna get fucked up today. Don's lawsuit states, in another instance, Mr. Combs punched Miss Ventura in the face in the bathroom of a party in LA. Frequently, when Miss Ventura attempted to voice an opinion or stand up to Mr. Combs, he would strike her or wrap his hands around her throat and choke her. She also alleges that they would be out to dinner with other high profile celebrity guests. She names them in the lawsuit. She once saw Diddy hiss at Cassie at the dinner table and hiss. forcibly punch her in the stomach so hard she doubled over and started crying. One of the other women escorted Cassie out of the restaurant and Diddy stayed to keep socializing. According to the lawsuit, whenever Don tried to step up and help or de-escalate, Diddy would threaten Don saying, allegedly he would say, this is normal. This was just a lover's argument. This is what love is. I'm giving you an opportunity. If you want to make it, shut your mouth. If you say anything, there will be consequences. Y'all just don't get in my relationship. Don't tell my bitch what she needs to be doing. Just make money and shut the fuck up. I end artists. I shelve careers. You could go missing. You just want to die today? You want to die today? I make n-words go missing i end people that is t like do those words just sound like someone who is sane an adult it just sounds like a really power hungry child i, I could not take you seriously with you talking like that who i know a lot of people talk like that okay but like what the hell is that crazy so he's blatantly doing this in front of every single person yeah. and nobody even dear to and I go against him I that's see, how powerful he was yeah i see a lot of people like ripping apart people for not coming forward until cassie came forward and i don't know what are your thoughts on it i see people ripping them apart i see other people arguing with them saying you just don't get it like it's not People aren't believed anyway to begin with and to go up exactly like i said you can say you're gonna do something but when you're actually in that situation in their positions would you actually do what you said you were gonna do most likely not like i said in the very beginning like people who try to be the whistleblower work gets around way too quickly so quickly and before you know it people who are maybe a little bit more low profile aren't that famous can more easily be just cut off and just no one really looks for them all that much so there's many reasons why people wouldn't speak up especially if a lot of these people are in that career path and run in the same circles and he has like a big hand in what happens in their career up against diddy is just the amount of funds he has yeah yeah no yeah yeah in 2019 a former on and off girlfriend of diddy's gina goes onto a podcast with tasha t where she alleges just a lot of things took place between her and diddy wait when was this 20 2019 all oh, right after yes but this whole podcast basically gets ignored kind of buried honestly this is a uh, four years before cassie's lawsuit comes out Mm -hmm. She says she met Diddy when she was 21, 22. She's been seeing Diddy for the past six years while he's been with Cassie. 
He's double her age at this point, but they start dating. And according to the timeline, Gina starts dating Diddy around the time that he's dating Cassie. She even alleges in the interview that Cassie did reach out to her a few times to tell her to leave Diddy alone. But she states that Cassie was always nice, never called her any names or anything. She even states in the interview that the last time she spoke with Cassie, Cassie reached out to her and she said, she called me at four in the morning, Cassie did, and was like, hey, I just had a dream and I just wanted to call you and tell you I don't, I don't hate you. I don't have bad blood. I don't have anything towards you or anything like that. Which side note, a lot of people think that Cassie telling her to leave Diddy alone wasn't like, leave my man alone, but right. rather leave, get out. Because if she was more of like a firecracker and someone who is prone to like lashing out, this would, the way these events turned out would have, would have turned out a little bit differently if she made a lot of noise but she was very submissive it seemed which made it easier for diddy and everyone else to keep this whole thing like under wraps if you will go like get help before it's too late Gina meets him February of 2014, allegedly gets pregnant in October of 2014, in which she alleges that she confides in him and he just assumes, well, you're going to get an abortion, right? She states she tells him she's not sure exactly what she wants to do, and he offers her $50,000 to terminate, which if true, I'm sure was incredibly insulting considering Gina states she did terminate, but she turned down the money. She said, I just loved him. I was just trying to prove to him that I'm not that girl that wanted the money. I just cared about him. She explains, and I just wanted him to be nice to me. It was like, I don't want your money. I just want you to be nice to me. She later alleges on the podcast, the first few months he was really nice. And then after he started being an asshole. And they like, always say, turn that the way. Years he was mean to me. When you say mean, could you describe it? People always show their nice side in the beginning of relationships so that they, once you are in a relationship and they feel like they have some know about you, then that's when they tro show their true selves. But you know, some people aren't that good at hiding things, but that's how they trap you. The first few months he was really nice. And then after he started being an asshole, like I would say the first three and a half years he was mean to me. When you say mean, could you describe it? Tasha T is asking her. Um, he was abusive. He was always belittling me. He was like mentally, emotionally, and physically abusing me. Tell me some of the things that he would say to you. He would always compare me to Cassie, tell me that I'm the bad one, she's the good one. And he was with both of you guys at the same time. Yeah, at one point I was like breaking out really bad with acne and he would be like, he said this a few times, he would be like, baby, why don't you go see a doctor or something? I don't date women with bumps on their faces. He would call me names, he would call me a hoe every single day. I was naive and young when I met him, so I felt like he was. Tr he tried to take advantage of that and manipulate me and make me feel low about myself. Cassie was 19, and when she turned 21, that's when he made his move. This girl, Tasha, was uh, 21 when they started dating, 21, 22. Obviously, you terminated baby one because you loved him. How long after dating did the physical abuse start? The first time it happened, which was not even that long into the relationship, we started dating beginning of February. It was probably beginning of May because we were at Meek Mill's birthday party. It was like a mansion party and we went. She explains that she's sitting down on her right is Diddy and on Diddy's right is Meek Mill. But she says, I was covered with like a stand or something, like probably says happy birthday Meek or something like that. And the stand was covering me because there was a lot of cameras and stuff there. So it's like me, Puff and Meek. So he's publicly dating Cassie. So this stand is kind of covering her. They put a little stand to cover her it seems like in it. front of her it seems like it is the insinuation so she's sitting there diddy's sitting next to her and then meek is sitting next to diddy and puff had leaned forward to talk to someone say hi or whatever so i turned over to meek to say happy birthday he put out his hand i reached over to take his hand and shake it as i shook meek's hand puff turned around saw it he got so mad we probably stayed 20 minutes after that happened and we when we got in the car he like grabbed my hair and cussed me out for doing that. He was like, what the f are you shaking his hand for? I was just like, I'm saying happy birthday. Insecure. So it was like a jealous rage. I think he thought I was trying to be sneaky behind his back. Cause like I reached over when he leaned forward to talk to someone. So he thought I was trying to be sneaky. 
and uh, how yeah the dude is like this level of fame and success and that insecure about it, everything wow so pathetic really yeah, exactly epitome and the interviewer is asking and you were how old at this time he's like double her age she says i was 22 probably like a little kid so uh, when we get to the hotel it gets worse he like took one of my heels and tried to throw it at me he like mushed my face really hard made my nose bleed and every time you know we get into fights like that which side note if this allegation is true that is not a fight that's a one-sided domestic battery charge that's not a fight right she's like really she says, the only person that ever it. tried to help me was d rock who is i believe a famous musician yeah everyone else just allowed it to happen and just like look the other way so the rest of everyone they would just watch well not like watch just like kind of walk away and just leave us alone and not really step in to um, stop it now what made you stay because obviously there's baby number two because she claims that she had two pregnancies he made her terminate because i just thought i just thought that he was only being like that because he loved me and she starts crying in this portion and she says i grew up watching my mom get beat by my dad that's all i knew so I okay just it was normal. that makes sense i just thought it meant he loved me okay let's talk about baby number two when did baby two come last year august 2018 so this is six years of them being together at this point. She says, mind you, it wasn't my fault that I got pregnant because I have like this period app and it tells me when I'm ovulating and stuff. So I told him that I'm ovulating, so don't do it. And he just did it anyways. And then I got pregnant and he was like, okay, then just get a termination. He didn't even hesitate. She says, but by this time it was harder for me because I'd been with him for so long and I was like really in love. Part of me wanted to keep it, but he didn't. And I had only agreed to terminating because he told me to. and. He took me to Turks and Caicos a couple days later before the termination. So right before the termination, he takes her to Turks and Caicos. And during that time, he was just giving me like alcoholic drinks to drink. And I was like, I'm not that comfortable. And he was just like, you're going to get an abortion anyway. He was kind of being distant towards me the whole trip anyway. She alleges that they come home from their trip on Sunday and the plan was to get the termination on Monday. She says when they get back on Sunday, quote, he had left me to go meet up with Cassie. So he just kind of like left me there for like half the day. And I was like, how are you going to leave me when you want me to do this thing tomorrow? He was obviously just making excuses on why he had to go. So because he left on Sunday, I was like, I'm not doing it tomorrow, though. I'm not going to terminate tomorrow. I just need some time to think about it. So I told him that I just need time to think about it. And he was like, well, then you can't leave my house. Like just being mean to me. He was like, I did this and this and this for you. And you told me you were going to do this. And now you're not doing it anymore. Like you, you can't get out of my house. She states he, she got the termination, but quote, not only that, I had to go home two days later because he had to go on a trip to Burning Man. So I had to go through that and he went to Burning Man and he just left me up and he didn't even, and you know, you don't get cell service in Burning Man because it's a desert. So I couldn't even get a hold of him. His texts weren't even coming through. I was just at home by myself, just up in the head and he didn't even care. Like it was just me. If he had to do something that traumatic for me, I wouldn't just leave him and go on a trip. This is on a public interview. Yeah. And people didn't care when that happened. She also talks about another time Diddy was abusive. And she says, the other time was when he caught me texting another man. It was in Miami. It got really crazy at that time. We were upstairs. We were in his closet and he pushed me and I fell to the ground. He stood over me. So I was like laying on my back. He stood over me and he started punching me on the sides of my head like just on both sides, she describes. And I was just like covering my face. After he got done doing that, because he was like standing over me, he like stomped on my stomach really hard. It took the wind out of my breath. I couldn't breathe, but he kept hitting me. I was like pleading with him, can you stop? Can you stop? I can't breathe. He stopped for a little bit. Then he grabbed my hair from the back and was punching the back of my head. And he was just avoiding my face when he was hitting me. The next big fight we got into at that point, I was fighting back because I had just had enough of his shit. And he kept pushing my buttons and I was just trying to calm the situation down before it got worse. And he kept pushing me and pushing me. I left his bedroom and went to his guest house because he has like a separate guest house. Now, side note, again, if the allegations here are true, she states the guest house has a meditation room, which is just, people think it's ironic. He followed me there and he continued talking shit to me. And I just got to the point where I was just so angry. And I took a bottle of Deleon tequila, smashed it on the ground. And he was like, you did that at my house with my kids here. I ran out of the meditation room. He chased after me, pushed oh, me onto the ground outside, there. took my hair and was dragging me across the grass with my hair. After that, a couple hours later, it was the weekend. So we had people coming over and he just acted like nothing happened. 
He was dancing, laughing, talking to me like we didn't just get into a physical fight. It was always a push and pull with him. He wanted to pull me close to him and push me away at the same time, which confused me and it just hurts. She also alleges that he was cheating quite a bit throughout all of this. He would just tell her that it's just her and Cassie, but she always found him texting other people. She claims that his nanny even texted him naked photos. Or at least that's what she claimed. She found unclear if the photos were coerced or not, but even so, very alarming considering the power dynamic, right? But I digress. She finds pictures of the nanny naked on his phone, according to her allegations, and she claims that he doesn't even feel guilty or ashamed. He just says, well, what do you expect? You're f***ing with a superstar. She also claims that he once hit her in front of her child. So she has a child from a previous relationship. Her daughter was three years old at the time, but she states he never abuses women in front of his children because he doesn't want them to see him like that. Really? That's the allegation, but it does seem kind of to track. In Cassie's lawsuit four years later, she alleges that once she was quote, healing and being trapped in Diddy's LA house to heal from her injuries, that he gave her, he FaceTimes her because he's out of town and instructs her, quote, you got to go up and put more makeup on. My son can't see you like that because I guess her bruising was showing. Mm. These are the allegations that Gina put forth on a podcast in 2019. Many netizens think that the whole story got buried by Diddy. And soon after the podcast, I think a lot of people didn't take it as seriously because she goes back to Diddy. Do which started some online drama between her and young Miami of City Girls who was reportedly dating Diddy at the time. Gina would later write on social media, he's just a really good longtime friend of mine, nothing more, nothing less. Like, I just want him to be happy because like he did bless me in a lot of ways and I'm always gonna be forever grateful and respect him. Which just to clarify, this is not to say that what she said was not the truth, which I'm not saying it is or not. These are her allegations. I'm just stating that two things can be true at the same time. She could have been physically, mentally, emotionally abused, and she could have still gone back to Diddy. Like, it's not, yeah. yeah. So all of these things, people are bringing it up because there's a small group of unhinged people being like, Cassie just wants money. But people are like, well, actually, the signs were there. Like, look at all these things. But it's not until CNN posts hotel surveillance footage that people realize Cassie was likely telling the truth the whole time about everything. And there's probably a lot more that we don't know. The footage is from 2016 at an intercontinental hotel in LA. In the security footage of the hotel hallway, you see Cassie quickly walking out of the hotel room. She's wearing this big oversized hoodie. She's barefoot and she's holding a bunch of things in her arms. And it's clear that she's in a rush to leave. She quickly walks towards the elevator. Uh, I'd be seconds running. Later, Diddy comes running out of the room with nothing but a towel around his waist. He runs out down the hallway, grabs her by the back of her hood, I saw the actual throws video. her onto the ground and starts kicking her. Cassie is just laying on the floor while he kicks her and she's in a fetal position. Diddy grabs the back of her hood and starts dragging her back towards the hotel. He also grabs her bags that were dropped and it appears that Cassie is crying out for help. Perhaps worried that someone would investigate, he lets Cassie go but takes all of her belongings into the hotel room. She goes back to the elevator to try and get the elevator, but he comes back, shoves her down and throws a vase at her from a nearby table, like a glass vase. And then did she leave or? She does end up leaving and it is exactly as she has it listed in her lawsuit. So the lawsuit comes out in November of 2023. The footage is released in 2024. So people are like, she literally details this assault exactly like the footage. See, the thing is, I don't see how people find it difficult to believe this stuff to be true or not. Because maybe is it just the whole idolization thing like oh no this this guy this artist he's like he's so famous these songs you hear these songs he's coming out with he's so cool he will never do this type of thing but like you just don't know these people you don't know these people so how is the footage not came out in 2016 he paid the hotel security worker fifty thousand dollars see that's wild to not post it. Yes. That security and worker needs place. to I think have that repercussions. He gave Diddy a copy. I don't know who else has copies. I imagine if someone like that is willing to take fifty thousand dollars to not release it or call the police, he probably took a copy of his own. Right. So who knows how many copies I mean, the hotel really has it still, right? He probably so, still had it. 
Okay, the hotel was owned by um, a big hotel company, and they state that, that 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 hotel is no longer under their management, and they don't have any files from them. So they're saying we didn't leak this in 2024. So See, and if you're not silenced literally, then you're silenced through money, which is just so. I just think it's pathetic, honestly. But this was leaked by somebody. It's unclear how CNN got this footage, and this becomes a whole thing because Diddy's attorneys are later going to allege that the government gave it to CNN. And if they did, it's a whole thing. What about but it? But it is exactly as Cassie has it listed in her lawsuit. She explains what happens afterwards, even though it's not captured on footage, or at least the release footage. Her attorney states, Cassie managed to get into the elevator and when she got to the lobby, quickly took a cab to her apartment. Upon realizing that her running away would cause Mr. Combs to be even angrier with her and completely stuck in this vicious cycle of abuse, Ms. Ventura returned to the hotel with the intention of apologizing for running away from her abuser. The lawsuit states, in or around March 2016, during that FO at the Intercontinental Hotel Century City, LA, Mr. Combs became extremely intoxicated and punched Miss Ventura in the face, giving her a black eye. After he fell asleep, she tried to leave the hotel room. As she exited, he woke up and began screaming at her. He followed her into the hallway of the hotel while yelling at her. He grabbed at her and then took the glass vases in the hallway and threw them at her, causing glass to crash around them as she ran to escape in the elevator. So I feel like the lawsuit doesn't even really describe it, how bad it is. I don't, I'm not saying it's intentionally downplayed, but it almost downplays it compared to the footage. But see, you, listening to all this stuff, there's a certain level of details of how all the scenarios is being played out to an extent that you can't ignore it. You can't just be like, oh, this is fake. This is made up. Because a lot of the times when cases are made up, it's very vague. And there's pieces of information in there that just don't make sense. And you can just very clearly tell it's made up, but but hearing this statement and just how it's worded and everything, it just, it sounds very, like, accurate. And it is accurate. I mean, here you have proof of it, but it makes sense. It doesn't seem made up for a money grab. Yeah, so think yeah, about yeah. everything else that's downplayed. Exactly. So with the video being released, Cassie but yeah, a lot does seem statement really statement downplayed. Stating, the gut wrenching video has only further confirmed the disturbing and predatory behavior of Mr. Combs. Words cannot express the courage and fortitude that Miss Ventura has shown in coming forward to bring this to light. Once this footage is leaked, all these other clips start going viral. I think people are trying to see if they could have seen the clues. The Met Gala interview from 2015 clues, has many... gone viral. And at the time, nobody really noticed, but Diddy and Cassie are being interviewed by Andre Talley, and she walks up to shake his hand. Diddy gives her the most insane death glare, and then very aggressively wraps his arm around her waist and pulls her in. She like, and her whole body seems to tense. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't wait to see 3 a.m. He does not seem happy at all during the interview and even puts his hand on the interviewer's shoulder in a comforting way, but it feels slightly threatening in hindsight. One netizen comments, he snatched her waist and I also saw the way he looked at her. This is pure control. If she stayed with him any longer, she might not be alive to tell anyone or file a civil lawsuit. Mm -hmm. The look he gave her for even shaking another man's hand, Diddy is going to have plenty of more women coming out of the woodwork. He's a monster. Then in 2017, they're back at the Met Gala. They're interviewed by Andre again. And it appears that she's reaching her hand out to shake his hand, but pulls back awkwardly while he appreciates her dress. She seems incredibly reserved this time. Like she doesn't even want anyone to, look to how focus far back on she her is. or her dress. And in comparison to the last Met Gala, where she approached Andre, shook his hand, this time she just waits in the back for Diddy to almost let her walk up and show off her dress. Working man in showbiz. Is this your moment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is it. This is fearlessness. This is it. The next Met Gala clip that goes viral is the next year, 2018, the year they break up. The theme is heavenly bodies, fashion, and the Catholic imagination. So Liza Koshi was asking each attendee the same question: Is there anything you'd like to confess tonight? Playing into the theme. But when she asks Cassie, a lot of netizens have pointed out, Diddy gives her a death glare once again. She stammers for about half a second before putting her hands into a prayer and saying, I keep everything here, right here, or right here. And she points at herself and Diddy. She says she keep everything right here between him and uh, her and Diddy? Yeah, or like her and 
prayers, God, I guess. But it's just the way that Diddy looks at her when they ask this question and the way that she kind of, it seems that she appears nervous and stressed about the question. Confess tonight before you go in. I keep everything right here or right here. <laughs> One comment reads, when she asks Cassie if there's anything she wants to confess, Diddy is giving Cassie the death stare and Cassie hesitates as if she's afraid to respond with the wrong thing. It's sad to see that she was that scared. Others have pointed out that Diddy is standing there in all white with crosses on while she's going through the most demonic shit. Even after the breakup went public, Diddy posts on Instagram a screenshot of the Michael Jackson song, The Lady in My Life, and he captions it, if anyone sees Cassie this weekend, please tell her to listen to this song a hundred times. Now, some people believe there are theories that maybe this was a song played during freak offs or something that's not actually yeah. meaningful. Notable lyrics include two hearts in a beat of ecstasy. Come to me, girl, and I will keep you warm. Stay with me. I want you to stay with me. I need you by my side. Don't you go nowhere. Even after everything he did to her, he still has the audacity to publicly try to do this and talk to her. It feels like a threat. Another friend of Cassie's comes out to state that Diddy gave Cassie a black eye the night before her perfect movie premiere in 2016, where she's the main female lead, which has everyone digging up those clips again. And in an interview at the premiere for that movie, an interviewer makes this kind of normal statement where she says, you and Terrence, your love, you know, your co-star, the male lead, the love interest in the movie. I mean, you guys were definitely believable. No, it, you know, we're friends at the end of the day. And that is very awkward when you're just friends with somebody and you're not in love, but... Um... Netizens have commented that you can see bruising on her face while she's answering these questions. It's unclear if it's the lighting or if there are bruises there, but others have also Could pointed out how she answered the question by the interviewer. They think it's just odd. Now, side note, in another interview, Cassie talks she's about like, how Terrence, her co-star, was nervous for their shit. slightly scene in the movie because quote he was super nervous because he knows puff and i think they had a conversation and puff was just like make it believable you know it's awkward as hell when you're not in love with somebody and you have to do something like that oh my god you said okay that that is awkward in another situation right if you're just a normal actor not involved in this kind of stuff that could be really awkward but then it's your job at the end of the day right it's just this situation in particular is even weirder because I mean, they're friends, I guess. And he has this fantasy of watching his girlfriend, his sex slave, essentially, hooking up with another guy. And he likes to watch and direct it. So essentially, he's going to kind of be doing the same thing, except he's going to watch it through a screen. Except this time it's with a friend and not just some random sex worker. The interviewer jokes that perhaps Terrence messed up the scene on purpose so he could redo it all over again. Oh my god. And to which Cassie's co-star, another female guest that was on this podcast, she responds, don't get Terrence hurt now. And I think it was all a joke, but it's all people are bringing yeah, up in hindsight. That's, I mean, it, yeah. I, a lot of netizens have also pointed out that it's kind of strange that Cassie has to keep mentioning to the world that it's uncomfortable doing these scenes with someone you're not in love with. I mean, that's acting. It's nothing new. Yeah. Some believe it's a reference to the freak offs that she did not want. Like, it's you don't want to do this with people you're not in love with. Others believe it's her desperately trying to tame the very violent, very jealous Diddy because I think she's scared it's that. Of safety. It's that. Or maybe even Terrence's safety and his car. In another interview for the same movie, which was released a year or two before their final breakup, the interviewer asks her if she thinks it's okay to keep a relationship a secret. I think, I mean, it depends on where the relationship goes. If it's something that you didn't want to share and it's your secret, it's your secret. I do believe in karma if you're hurting people, but... <laughs> in another interview about the same movie, she's asked about how she feels about Diddy being at the premiere, watching her and Terrence because they have scenes. They say, your boyfriend's going to sit down next to you and you and Terrence are, what does that feel like? It's work. It feels, I mean, obviously there's a little bit of anxiety with that, but Terrence is a good friend of mine and, you know, Puck has been so understanding with everything, so it's good. But people have said it feels a little odd in hindsight. Not that the interviewer's question was odd, but just in hindsight of Diddy watching the freak offs and... I think the interviewer's question is odd already, but I guess genuine curiosity and just trying to get some form of 
funny reaction of it just to get views and get more money. But yeah, in the hindsight, being asked that without knowing what's actually that is actually happening in her real life is the same thing with the movie. Mm. She's asked about her boyfriend Diddy as well. You know, what makes you guys work? She responds, uh, I think that what makes any relationship work, if it's working, you know, just not talking about it too much, just keeping it close to your heart. That feels like has a lot of dual meanings. Yes. Because people are saying, if it's working, not talking too much. Hmm. Others have just pointed to another interview to show how much power Diddy has in the industry. The interviewer says, I mean, look, there's no way around it. You're Diddy's girlfriend. He's a marquee name. He's one of the richest guys in our culture, hip hop. Hey, richest guy in the don't world, honestly, one much. of them. And I'm Settle sure down. you being your own person, it's pretty hard to re navigate a relationship with someone like Diddy. Cassie does state it's hard because nobody associates her with music anymore, but more so just Diddy's girlfriend. Yeah, but that she still must has be that so heartbreaking. Fans that are just asking for more and more music, and it's difficult because you know she's she loves music and she's working on it. People have also taken apart a video Cassie uploaded, a music video released one year before their breakup. It's titled Cassie, a short film where she alludes to a toxic relationship, and she says he's like an aggravating high. Like the high you want to go away, but you never want to go away. It creeps up on you, has you do some crazy shit that you would never do, and then it leaves you in the middle of the night. In it, she has a line that says, I just want to be free. And in the end of the short film, she drives off from the toxic relationship by herself, and she's standing in the desert with her arms outstretched, to which people allude and think it's her spreading her wings. She does state in an interview that this short film was really important for her because she was involved in every creative aspect of it. Furthermore, it, because hindsight is 2020, an eye-opening, a lot of people have pointed to the fact that it's crazy how nobody knew what was going on behind closed doors because after their final breakup, there was a whole TV segment on whether or not Cassie should go back to Diddy. People were commenting about how they break up every single year and it seems like Cassie is just really looking for that ring. She wants to get married. They also state that Diddy is posting on Instagram about how much he wants her back and it's so romantic. Again, they clearly don't know what's going on behind closed doors. Right. But a lot of people have pointed it out just to say, we truly don't know the private lives of these celebrities. Exactly. Even other celebrities exactly. don't know but all these clips start getting brought back up and making its rounds online. Oh, along with a picture that has been circulating that's rumored to be Cassie wearing sunglasses and she has a busted forehead, busted lip. This is while she's dating Diddy, but she said that Dubai was crazy. Like her trip to Dubai was crazy and it was quickly deleted from her Instagram. It does not mean Dubai is crazy. I think she was insinuating she tripped and got hurt or it was just so crazy. She was drunk and mm. she was having too much fun. But um, a lot of people think that it was yeah. the abuse. And this was her way of trying to maybe even test the waters and hope that people would be like, oh my gosh, wait a minute, is she being hit or something? Now, all these clips, they start being brought back up and making its rounds online, including the interrogation of Jonathan Odie, oh, yeah, the man from the Trump Hotel, who claims to have been a for Diddy because he was saying everything about the freak offs before Cassie's lawsuit. Who is this guy? He is a girl. It seems that a lot of netizens believe he has association with Diddy and Cassie. He likely was a worker that engaged in the freak offs. He likely was paid off. Some people think that maybe he tried to blackmail Diddy for money. Some people think that Diddy hired PIs to follow him. And it just kickstarted this paranoia and probably an already slightly unwell mind. And it spiraled into him creating all these crazy conspiracies to make sense of everything. And I'm sure the drug usage didn't help. Yeah. Many netizens believe that he was telling the truth. They say, they comment, 2018, this man is crazy. 2024, wow, he was telling the truth. Another comments, this is why I don't write people off as crazy immediately. I mean, that also, I just mentioned in the beginning also how random it would be to just name off Diddy out of all celebrities. And while... A lot of it is unhinged and he's rambling a lot. There's some little pieces of details in there that's just like, hold on, wait, I think we got to look a little bit more into that. This guy had no reason to lie and his story from six years ago is consistent with what we're hearing today. 
Another reads, this is why I get mad when people ask victims, why did you wait until now to say something? People Shut have been up. saying something for many years and they were called crazy, ignored, not believed, and nothing was done about it. That man has gotten away with destruction for years because of this. I believe every word Jonathan has said. Some just comment, what if those bottles of baby oil are laced with liquid cocaine? Others state, yeah, he might have been saying some unhinged things about like the government and stuff, but who knows if that's even true, right? Maybe. But some parts must be true. And perhaps he lost his mind because of the, the incident involving is Diddy. Really scary. I don't think he's the a numb bag. I think he doors. went into a state of psychosis triggered by drugs and he was paranoid because of Puff Daddy's handlers were following him, harassing him, and threatening him. Others don't believe a single thing Jonathan says. They say lies on top of lies on top of lies. Diddy does officially come out to respond to the hotel footage that was revealed by CNN. He states now in a since deleted Instagram video, remember this man goes from, these are baseless, outrageous lies to. So difficult to reflect on the darkest times in your life. Sometimes you gotta do that. I was fucked up. I mean, I hit rock bottom. I make no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. Disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it. I'm disgusted now. I'm disgusted now watching this. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy. You need more than therapy, yeah. bro. As God for his mercy and grace. You need a spot Which a source under the ground. Which says about his comment about being hitting rock bottom. Rock bottom must be his personality. I've never not seen this person. Netizens have commented, he did not hit rock bottom. He hit Cassie repeatedly until she was a shell of a woman. Other comments read, if he's this brazen and brutal in a hotel hallway, just imagine how evil he is behind closed doors. Exactly. I'm more scared of what hasn't been caught on camera. When someone says, why didn't you leave? Remember this video, Cassie was leaving, or at least she was trying to. The fact that the hotel security accepted a $50,000 payoff to hand the footage over to the abuser instead of calling Insane. the police to attempt to help this woman is disturbing and disgraceful. Very. Others just point out, wait, weeks ago, he said the accusers were liars and now this video gets dropped and he takes full responsibility. Others just ominously write, you can apologize and you can repent, but the crime you've committed, you still have to pay for it. Additionally, in a since taken down Instagram post, Misa Hilton, one of the mothers of Diddy's children, he, she's the mother of 30 year old Justin Combs. She's actually known Diddy since she was a teenager. Yeah, she addresses the footage. She says, I am heartbroken that Cassie must relive the horror of her abuse and my heart goes out to her. I know exactly how she feels and through my empathy, it has triggered my own trauma. Oh my God, he there's needs those help two and or I am three more videos. He truly does the personal work and receives it. Some netizens thought the statement was interesting. It seems like she's being careful with her words to not land herself in legal trouble. But netizens have also pointed out the fact that she said she's reliving her own trauma. Mm -hmm. Is that trauma that she had with other people or with Diddy? Mm -hmm. He needs to work on himself. Some interpret it as he needs to learn and grow from this, which could be interpreted as casual downplaying of a violent incident. Or it could mean like lock him up in a psych ward. He needs help. Like we got to do something. Tiffany Red, the friend who corroborated Cassie's version of events the night of the 29th birthday, states to Diddy, your abuse of power has inflicted ongoing harm on countless individuals, including myself, my friends, and my peers. You are a literal pillar in black music. So many of us looked up to you. This moment hurts for us too, but no one deserves to endure all of this. It's not right. You're hurting the very black and brown people you say you love and support. It pains me to write this letter to you, Diddy, as a black woman, but when will this cycle of abuse stop? It has to stop. Cassie's attorney states, Combs' most recent statement is more about himself than the many people he has hurt. When Cassie and multiple other people have come forward, he denied everything and suggested that his victims were looking for a payday. Then he was only compelled to apologize once his repeated denials were proven false, and that shows his pathetic desperation, and no one will be swayed by his disingenuous words. The Tiffany Red's message to Diddy, is that like a you say she wrote a letter an open letter to rolling stone because at that point there were some people that were not really believing cassie or oh. believing yeah well you're only saying that now because you want money got it okay yeah oh and tiffany red said she's scared for her life yeah when she wrote that when she wrote that she also stated that in some of the lawsuit verbiage it's very clear that tiffany red is the friend that's cooperating for 
Cassie. Mm. So you, it seems like she actually went public also for safety. Right, right, right. So just so everyone knows that she's yeah also a target, could be. She said she doesn't go outside now. She stopped making music. I mean, this has completely ruined her life. Yeah. Cassie has also made her only public statement since her lawsuit about the matter. She writes, the outpouring of love has created a place for my younger self to settle and feel safe now. But this is only the beginning. Domestic violence is the issue. It broke me down to someone I never thought I would become. With a lot of hard work, I'm better today, but I will always be recovering from my past. My only ask is that everyone open your heart to believing victims the first time. It takes a lot of heart to tell the truth out of a situation that you were powerless in. I offer my hand to those who are still living in fear. Reach out to your people. Don't cut them off. No one should carry this weight alone. The healing journey is never ending, but this support means everything to me. Thank you. Love always, Cassie. Very nicely put. Her husband, Alex Fine, posted to Instagram, a letter to women and children. Men who hit women aren't men. Men who enable it and protect those aren't men. As men, violence against women shouldn't be inevitable. Check your brothers, your friends, and your family. Check Our daughters, them. sisters, mothers, and wives should feel protected and loved. Hold the woman in your life with the utmost regard. Men who hurt women hate women. To all the survivors, find the men and women who help and love. To all the survivors, your stories are real and people believe you. To all the survivors, you are not alone. And there are men and women who care only for your well-being and safety. We want you to succeed and flourish. To all the women and children, I'm sorry you live in a world where you're not protected and you don't feel equal. I want to raise my daughters in a world where they are safe and loved. To the abusers, you're done. You're not safe anymore. You're not protected anymore. The men by your side are just as weak. You're so miserable with yourself that death would be considered a kindness. Look, the, that this is the words of a true, loving, respectful man, okay? Granted, we don't know him personally, okay? But just the comparison between Diddy and this man right here, world of a difference world of a difference some netizens think that diddy should have seen this coming because cassie told him in a song exactly what she planned on doing in her song love a loser which she states she helped write the lyrics read i'd rather lose a lover than love a loser everything you did i couldn't do it to you got my vision clear so now i'm seeing through you writing you a letter i'm gonna send it to you which she did the letter just happened to be in the form of a lawsuit that would end his career. Because shortly after Cassie, 10 other victims have filed lawsuits against Diddy, which we will cover in depth in the next episode. Those are the lawsuits that have already been filed. There is an attorney in Texas named Tony Busby who states there's a lot more coming, perhaps 120 more. Out of the 120 accusers he is representing and working with, Tony says 60 of them are men, 60 of them are women, and 25 of them are minors when the alleged abuse took place. Tony states that one of the abused was even as young as nine years old when he was allegedly abused by Diddy. The individuals that are being repped by Tony Busby, he states, come from 25 different states, majority from California, New York, Georgia, and Florida. He alleges that many of the alleged abuse took place at auditions where, quote, many times, especially young people wanting to break into the industry, were coerced into this type of conduct in the promise of being made a star. I want to focus on the ages of these victims. When we talk about the ages of these victims, when the conduct occurred, it is shocking. He states, this should have never been allowed to go on for so long. This conduct has created a mass of individuals who are injured, scared, and scarred. He states that he has set up a hotline for any victims of Diddy to call. They have received over 12,000 calls in just 24 hours. He states ominously, I have no doubt that there are people right now who know that they were somehow involved in this, who are now scrubbing their social media, yep. who are searching their memories, who are deleting yep. their texts, probably deleting pictures and trying to distance themselves from this. And we know who they are, or we will find out who they are. This is not something that's going to happen overnight, but I think we are at the tip of the iceberg. That I think we can agree with. This is the tip of the iceberg. And this is part one. Part two will be up soon. In that episode, we will be going in depth on the other 11 lawsuits, as well as in depth on the one lawsuit against his son, which is about what happened at a Diddy yacht party and the very, very strange death of the mother of his children, Kim Porter, and the very controversial book that claims to be her diary entries before her death. And that book seems to implicate Diddy as having a much larger role in her death. So stay tuned for that, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one. 
See, so the other two have already been released, but I will save those for another day. Wow, this video was like two hours. I felt like it was going on forever. Just the amount of information in here. A lot of it, I, I'm not completely lost with. I already kind of knew a little bit about it, but just going more into the depth of it and just being kind of organized in the timeline, it really just um, helped clear up a lot of things. And this is only part one. The other parts are also two hours. Just so much information. As big as this is, as big as the people that are involved in it, as long as this has been going on, the it's just so much information is going to be thrown out. And the amount of information that is still being dug up and hidden. Hidden and being dug up. Because this is just the beginning. Sure, we're specifically talking about Diddy here, but the amount of people, other rappers, other artists that were involved in it, maybe didn't play that big of a hand because this seems to be like the host of everything. The amount of other artists who are involved, the amount of information that can be dug up from them. And the way she's just recounting everything, it's just not her being over dramatic at all. If, if anything, they're just downplaying things. This is such a serious matter. And it's so infuriating that people just like brush it off and like accuse her of just like wanting a money grab and stuff. Just how easily these women were um, um, able to be just trapped essentially, starting from a young age just having their hopes and dreams just like crushed like that and not even just their hopes and dreams just their whole life essentially their mentality also yeah i do vaguely remember people just making a whole lot of memes on the baby oil thing so that needs to be just get that out of here that is the least of anyone's worries focusing on the ages is something that's very very gonna be very pivotal because at least something that has been reported is as youngest as nine. It's truly disgusting, but we have so many more videos to get to, or so much more information to get to. So I'm gonna end it here. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me if you did. Long video, a lot of information. I know it's not really easy to hear this kind of stuff, but it is reality. You don't know these people. I would argue that you never really should look up to any celebrity because you don't know them. You do not know these people. I want to hear more about this book because I just knew there was a book, but just the details of the book itself. Also, the list. I know there's been some names thrown around, but... And while I'm not denying those people going to be on the list because I can believe if they're on the list. And just all the other dark stuff, like in this video it seems, is just gonna take a lot of mental energy to absorb all that information. As always, stay hydrated, stay nourished. I need to go eat something. Just overall, take care of yourself and others. Don't be a bystander. So yeah, overall, just take care of yourself and I will catch you guys on the next one. Goodbye.